This is TNA, the new face of professional wrestling. This belt is yours for now, but I sincerely think it's not going to be yours for long. The bottom line is Jim Cornette had to do what he had to do. You know, Sting talks about how he agrees with the decision that Cornette made. It's easy for him to say, I agree with it, but he wasn't the World Heavyweight Champion. I was. I'm going to get the four toughest, baddest, meanest guys in TNA. And we're going to have a four-way match at Victory Road in July. When one man stands as the toughest of the tough, the baddest of the bad, then that man is going to be the number one contender. Jeff Jarrett is walking around with something that belongs to me. I'm still the true NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I know it. He knows it. Everybody knows it. Come Victory Road. I will come out the victor, and then I will be wrestling for the world title. Friends will be friends, but in a ring, I have no friends. I will get the title. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, on to me or on to anyone. Victory Road belongs to me. I can't. Hey, Flapping. Sorry. Pardon the interruption. Am I bothering you? <laughs> I am the king of the mountain. That's J. Double L. I am NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Jim Cornette, you actually thought you could control I me. I am the most powerful man in all of TNA. J. Double R. Christian K. The Peeps Champion. Double C. The one time pretender to my You heard the flavor of the month. But that bad taste in your mouth means your time has come and gone. Samoan Joe. The Samoan submission Joe, machine. Joe, Joe, Joe. <laughs> you may be a devastating machine, but now you're playing with the big boys. And son, you are Joe, way out of your league. Joe, Joe, Scott Steiner. <laughs> big Papa, huh? The big bad booty daddy. Don't forget that I brought you to TNA, and I'm still master and commander of your destiny in TNA. Sting. Ah, oh, the Stinger. The icon. The legend. The superhero. The Stinger. A man on a mission. My mission is to send you packing. Just like I did to another icon. The immortal one, Paul Cole. Sting. I'll make you regret the day that you ever step foot into TNA. King, you can enter my and world. with the kingdom of the king of the mountain. greatest legacy that will be ending yours. J-A-R-R-E. I am Jeff Jarrett, the king of the mouth. This is my world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. And don't forget, I will get my revenge. We now return you to your regularly scheduled broadcast. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Victory Road. It's the road to victory, four-way number one contenders match. Who's next in line for a title shot against the NWA World Champion Jeff Jarrett? Will it be Samoa Joe, Scott Steiner, Christian Cage, or Sting? The answer, it's next at Victory Road. to the Impact Zone, he is the franchise, Shane Douglas! Mike, there he is, the franchise, and the big question is, does he have the Nationals ready? We've seen him put him through like a boot camp. I mean, it's been his mission, his promise to his late brother, Chris Candido. Are they ready? They were so talented, they were former champs. 
And if anybody can bring him back to Providence, it's that man. I think if anybody can Cut find up. tough love, it's the franchise Music. Jane Douglas. Censored himself. Have you heard the one about ECW? Stop me if you've heard it. They lost the franchise and gained a dick. <laughs> Flair. <laughs> Now on to more serious things. You know, it's often been said, is life about the journey or is it about the destination? Well, for the last six weeks, I can tell you the naturals have been on one hell of a nasty journey. You see, I told you folks here in TNA, you would not see them again until I, the franchise, said they were ready. Well, tonight, right here, I say my team is ready. And I swore to you, and before my God and Chris Candido and my Father in Heaven tonight, that when you saw the Naturals, they would be a vastly different team than the last time you saw them. Well, tonight, their destination starts to come true. I said I would take them back to their nirvana, known as the TNA Tag Team Championships of this world. And damn it, tonight, my team starts on that journey. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Chase Stevens, and Andy Douglas, the newly franchised Naturals. What a story this is. They've been at the top of the mountain before. They've been NWA World Tag Team Champions. But boy, it's been a really rough road over the course of the past year or so. Check out the new look, the new outfits. Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas, the franchise, Let's just say, when it comes to Shane Douglas, it's his way or the highway for the natural. Well, you can see they're missing a little bit of the hair up top, but he's absolutely reforming these guys into the, the mold that he's created, the mold that he sees fit to take these guys back to the top of the tag team mountain. A team that, man, at one point was probably the most promising tag team I think that I've ever seen. So young, so fired up. So aggressive, Mike. So promising. And then to see them fall like they did, and this man, and you see, he's gonna leave them on their own. He's not out wow. here to babysit them. He's not out here to babysit them. They've got to show they can do it. He's got their back, but he doesn't have to be out here in front. Wow. Interesting contrast here. You see the diamonds in the rough, and you see Simon Diamond patrolling around the ringside area. But the franchise, Shane Douglas, he left the ringside area after the introdu introduction and headed back up the ramp and to the locker room area. You're right, he's going to let the Naturals, I guess, prove it themselves. Well, you got to sink or swim, Mike. And he, what he's doing is, is he's letting them know that I'm not out there to hold your hand. It's up to you guys to win the championships. I'll give you the direction. I'll guide you the right way. But I'm not going to be out there for you to lean on. You can't look at me and expect me to come in and help and be ringside. They've got to do it. Man, they're coming out aggressively. Well, you're not kidding. Right out of the starting blocks. You see the double shoulder block in the pin attempt on David Young. Prime time in the legal man. Andy Douglas. Oh, Bulldog. Drove him face first to the canvas. Oh, Simon you. Diamond looks on from ringside. The Naturals. Stevens and Douglas, check out these quick tags. Well, I like the way they've started. I mean, whoa, whoa, look at, whoa, look at there. They just wound either skipper right into the way they want him. It looked like Enix was getting out, and now they go right after it. Give it right to David Young right back. I mean, it's been relentless, and I like the way they're starting, and that's a good thing. I think if they started out slow, you could have maybe seen this team crumble right before our eyes. Skipper and Stevens battle in front of us here at the broadcast position. Well, whoa! Oh, David Young came what? out of nowhere. What happened there? Can you believe it, David Young? That backwards boot sold off the top rope, and that's a lot of weight. And the 
me tell you, that'll stop some momentum in a hurry. And you can see that's exactly what he's going to wow. realize. I mean, I never saw it coming. All of a sudden, I saw Chase Stevens. I think out of the corner of his eye, he saw a body just hurtling out of space and crashing down into both men on the arena floor. Oh, and you can't uh, blame anybody. Look at that matrix move by Primetime. What an incredible athlete. Goes for the cover. Slick Johnson down for the two count. You know, you mentioned it earlier. The franchise, Shane Douglas, touched on it as well. The Nationals were managed by the late Chris Candido, and I really think when you look back at the way their careers went, I mean, his death, it, it had to be a major factor in their slump. They lost their focus, they were wandering aimlessly, no direction in the tag team division. That was until Candido's best friend, triple threat partner, franchise Shane Douglas. Well, let's just say now it's his way or the highway when it comes to the Nationals, but I think it's gonna be quite a different look for the Nationals now under the mentorship of the franchise. You know, when you lose somebody close to you, you handle it in two ways. You either you build with them and you take what they've given you in your life and you move forward, or you can go backwards. And I think you, you said it best. The Nationals, and you can see there, is David Young and Neil Skipper are just on fire right now. Uh, they went backwards. And, and I think Shane Douglas looked at that same memory and that same, you know, Remember to Chris Candido, and he thought this is what I got to do to make himself feel better and to do what's right by him. And he put these guys, he got these guys together, and you can see, even though right now it doesn't look good, with the way they started out, it was a whole different act. You know, it's such a long grind if you think about it, to the top of the tag team division in TNA because of the incredibly deep competition that we have. The new champs, oh, AJ Styles and Daniels as the double sledge off the top by David Young. Throw Stevens to the canvas, but Douglas in for the save. We're talking about AJ and Daniels, AMW, Team 3D, the James Gay, LAX. I mean, even the Diamonds, they haven't had a great one loss record as of late, but they have tons of experience together. Well, right now, they're, they're you know what? They held off the onslaught. The Nationals came out fired up, and you've got to give the Diamonds and the rough credit as Simon Diamond has kept them focused. And here's another pin. Oh, just in time. He kept them focused, and he didn't panic. He didn't panic when it looked like the Nationals were going to win this thing early and fast. And look at it, it has turned completely in the Diamonds in a rough favor. I think the franchise is maybe having some second thoughts about not staying at ringside to both cheer on as well as give some game plan and strategy to his new tag team. And check out Andy Get Douglas unloading right hand shots into the gut of Skipper and now the double team from the Nationals. Well, he's got to see both sides of it. He's got to see if these guys can rise from adversity. He's got to see if they can come back when they're down. And right now, it looks like they are. And well, look at that, Andy Douglas dunks. David Young ends up hitting his own partner, Enix Skipper, and man, it's a two-on-one advantage. Wow, well, look at there, Andy Douglas just lifts him high up in the air. Nice elevation with the back body drop. Skipper charges at Douglas, and he does the same to prime time. Attention turned to David Young. Fired off into the ropes, wild swing and a miss with the clothesline, but the high knee caught him right in the chest. I gotta stay on the press with the way they've come back. I mean, the diamonds in the rough. Oh, here he goes. Oh, he flips him around and puts him on his back. One, and pin, two, and two. Yo! I mean, no. We're seeing some, some new moves here from the Naturals. Nice double underhook, driving Skipper down and then going for the pin from Andy Douglas. Wait a minute, Douglas. Oh, he lost his focus there momentarily. I mean, you've got to stay on the legal man, five-time healing skipper, and not worry about what David Young's doing out on the arena floor. Yeah, good point, Mike. That's just a, that's just a mistake. You can't get over there on their side of the ring either. Keep things on your side where you've got help. And, well, you see Chase taking matters in his own hands and coming out, but he's still groggy. Man, he looks just nailed it. Skipper gonna take Stevens now, who puts on the brakes and doubles him over with the boot. Chase has got prime time up, off the top, Whoa. Andy Douglas, drop kick out of the lights. One, two, got it, got it. Here are your winners, the Naturals. I mean, the franchise has gotta be impressed with the results. Oh, they came back and you can see them coming down and well, that doesn't look like he's that impressed on the faceless face. Of course, with him, you never can tell. He's so intense anyway. The franchise, yeah, Shane Douglas. Wait, wait a minute. Calling, calling him over to him. I thought it was a great comeback. Now but... what? I mean, we can't hear what he's saying, but... Doesn't look like a positive, though, does it? No, look at the looks on the, the faces of the naturals. I, I don't know if they can believe what they're hearing. And they're, oh, hey, I guess you can never be satisfied till you get perfection, I think is 
Yeah, that's what's exactly going in the what mind it is. Of the franchise. I mean, you know the franchise, Shane Douglas, very well, and you know what a perfectionist he is. I think he's out here, but you see that he's berating them and sending them back to the locker room. I think in his mind, yeah, you got to win, but you can do even better. Well, I, know, I think he also wants to keep them from getting too cocky. That can ruin you as a team. I think he wants to keep them from, you know, getting ahead of themselves, thinking they're ready for the big time yet because they're not, and he dressed them back down. Well, under the franchise, Shane Douglas, the Naturals, get a win here to kick off the Victory Road pay-per-view event. It's Tanae and West. Mike today, Don West, back at the ringside broadcast position. Don, let's preview for everybody what we have in store tonight at this great Victory Road 2006 pay-per-view event. Four big matchups now that we're going to prepare with graphics to show you, including a no disqualification. Six-man tag team matchup. Get ready for Team 3D against the James Gang and the Monster Abyss. Well, Larry Zabisco, Raven, this thing has been going on for forever. Tonight, it comes to an end, and one of these men go home bald. NWA tag team titles on the line in a six-person matchup. AMW and Gail Kim against Daniel Styles and Serelda. Christian Cage, Sting, Samoa Joe, and Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. One man comes out of this matchup as the number one contender. And that number one contender is in line for a championship matchup next month at the Hard Justice pay-per-view against the King of the Mountain himself, Jeff Jarrett, the NWA title holder. One of those four men involved in that road to victory four-way is the former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion to the back, JB with Christian Cage. Backstage now with one of the participants in tonight's main event, Road to Victory match, Christian Cage, set to do battle tonight against three other opponents. Number one contenders match tonight. Four participants, only one. One gets to walk the road to victory. Who's it gonna be? That's the question. But it seems there's a lot of questions these days, doesn't there? Like, what happened to the old Christian? Where's he at? What happened to him? Well, the old Christian took a little sabbatical but it seems like he's about to come back to work. Confident? You bet your sweet little asses I'm confident. Why not? Scott Steiner's confident. Look at him. The guy's a specimen. He's got huge arms. He's intimidating. But Scotty, that tattoo on your chest, it's a dead giveaway. A giveaway of something that you're seriously lacking. Something that you need to become a champion. And that something is heart. But Scotty, don't worry. After you fail tonight, you'll still have a spot. You'll still have a great spot. You can step right back in Jeff Jarrett's shadows. Confidence. Samoa Joe has it. And he's got an unblemished record going into the ring tonight. He says, I am TNA. He says, I am professional wrestling. He says, are you going to finish those french fries? He says, I want to be the man. Well, Joe, look at my face. Look into my eyes. The difference between you and I is this. You say you want to be the man, and I am the man. Confidence. That's what Sting had when he painted himself into a corner. When he said he wanted to rid TNA of Jeff Jarrett. Well, it's do or die tonight for you, Stinger. But unfortunately, Sting, you're just a carton of milk. A carton of milk, you know, a carton of milk. It's good for you. It has all the nutrients. You open it up, you, you take a little sniff, it smells okay. You take a sip, but it doesn't taste right, does it? So you flip it upside down and you realize it expired yesterday. It's like this, Sting. It's the Christian Cage era in TNA. And Jeff Jarrett, you're strutting around with something that belongs to me and that's the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And after Victory Road, I'm confident I'm taking it back. Because that's... His candid comments rattled the wrestling world. I signed with TNA, why? Because they're the future of pro wrestling. They don't hand you a piece of paper and say, read from this. No, they say, here's the mic. Go out there and make a difference. 
There's the ring. Go out there and kick some ass. And that's what Rhino does best. The War Machine Rhino. He issued a challenge to anyone from anywhere at any time. It doesn't matter who you work for, what company, whether it's a four-sided ring, six-sided, or eight-sided. Bring your ass to the impact zone and face me face to face. His brass challenge sent a message to TNA. Monty Brown is about to go streaking straight through the competition. Willing to take on any man, anytime, anywhere. I came for the big game, the big hunt, like you, Rhino. Two men on the same path of destruction. I am the Alpha Male Monty Brown. Because the end result is always the same. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from the Serengeti, he is the Alpha Male, Monty Brown! It was last month at Slammiversary when Monty Brown made his intentions crystal clear. The former National Football League linebacker saw how the year-long winning streak of Samoa Joe had elevated the Samoan submission machine into the NWA World's Heavyweight title picture. You know, the alpha male, he believes in his mind that he belongs in that same mix. He declared he's going to start his own unbeaten streak, and he's been mowing down the competition on impact. But tonight, he takes a step up, a serious step up in competition, because he's got to face the war machine. And his opponent, from Detroit, Michigan, the War Machine, Bruno! And you can see the passion of Rhino and the, the fire of the Alpha Male. They just meet each other right there. Monty knew he was going to come charging that ring. He went straight at him, and look at this. It's a fight. It's a war. And you'd expect nothing much from two guys that wow. are basically challenging everybody right now. Did you see what the Alpha Male just did? Turned it around in mid-move. He fired off the war machine, and Rhino crashed back first right into the steel guardrail. Monty Brown, that's 290-plus pounds taken up into the air, and the Alpha Male dropped him right first across the steel. Well, I, I talk about the words that Rhino's been giving us, the passion that you feel, but that's an athlete out there in Monty Brown. That's somebody that has been out there in the field of battle in a football game and has crushed people going at full speed. He's not intimidated, he's not impressed, and he's coming right at him. But listen to the crowd, they're fully behind the wall. Oh, they team. sure are really getting behind Rhino, who misses with the clothesline. Boot to the midsection. Here comes the alpha male off the road. Just overpowered him. Wow. Tossed him right back down to the mat. You know, I love the mindset of Jim Cornette, the new public face of TNA management. Both Monty Brown, Rhino tossing out open challenges. And he said, we're going to make it happen at Victory. Oh, look out! Oh! I never expected it that early. Well, he thought he saw an opening. That's one thing about it. He knows you give the War Machine time. He can do that. Look at what happened to referee Andrew Thomas. Rhino hit the dirt. A great move, a great defensive move on his part. And Andrew Thomas just got green. He just got pounced, and he's out cold in the ring. I mean, we were, we were going to talk about the pounce versus the gore as part of this matchup. I never expected the Alpha Male to go for the pounce so early here in the opening minute. Watch Rhino! Oh, just slingshot right over the top rope, and his 290 pounds land right on top of the Alpha Male, and even he can't hold on to that momentum. But I'm worried about Andrew Thomas in the ring. He caught that full fledge on, but it was a good move on Rhino's part to duck. But Andrew Thomas in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not even moved, Mike. What a reaction from the crowd here at the Impact Zone at Victory Get Road up, to the War Machine Rhino. And you know when he grabbed that open microphone to kick off Impact this week, I certainly had no idea what was about to happen. We witnessed one of the most passionate, most heartfelt straight from the gut challenges, the double underhook by the Alpha Male, and then reeling off those right hands. You know, it was fueled by that recent decision that he made to turn down the WWE contract offer. He was pumped up when he signed the new deal with TNA. He left no question when it comes to how he feels about the professional wrestling landscape in 2006 as the alpha male, Monty Brown, is trying to revive the referee, Andrew Thomas. Well, 
Oh man, Rhino, one thing it took him a little too long to get him revived, and that gave Rhino just a little too much time to recover. And you don't allow somebody with the skills of Rhino that much time to think about it, and you can see how quickly this is gonna turn. Belly to belly by the War Machine. Blitz, Monty Brown. Looks like he's getting ready for the board. Oh, he's set up. He wants to end it quick, just like Monty Brown did. And here he goes. Oh, oh, God. oh my down. God. Oh, you can't take a pounce and a gore in the same match. This is just so awful for this young kid. We got to get some help out here. I mean, you talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Twice, a pounce and a gore. Somebody needs to check and make sure he's got a pulse. As you see, these guys what don't care. Fest. They're just brawling, man. It's a fight right now. It's just a fight. That's really what it's evolved into, and I guess we shouldn't be surprised. It is really just broken down completely between these two. Referee completely knocked out of the situation, and now it's the alpha male and the war machine just exchanging right hands galore. They're going to have to get another rep in here as far as I'm concerned. Andrew Thomas won't be able to do anything in this match. You don't take a gore. You don't take a pounce and get up and walk away from it, not the same night. And right now, Monty Brown seems to have the upper hand and just plants him right, right on top of the head. But look at Rhino fight back. Yeah, that was a momentary upper hand because Rhino gets right back to his feet and he just tossed him right out of the security rail, right into the crowd here at the Impact Zone and here comes security. Well, security realizes this thing has turned out into an all out war. They know that they've got to do something here. I don't know what kind of, I mean, it's just, I think they realize when these guys got in the crowd that somebody's going to get hurt. Security's got to get out there to protect the people. Oh, look at them both still laying those right hands, shot after shot. And security at this point, they're almost standing back and just letting them battle. Well, I wouldn't get in between them. I mean, look at these guys. I mean, two guys that have made bold statements, two guys that have let the entire world of TNA know they'll challenge anybody and everybody. They won't back down from anyone. And look at this. Rhino pushing security Oh, out boy, away. that's a dangerous situation. Even for the fans here in the impact zone, you're right, the war machine tossing security around. We've got to call for the bell here. There's, there's no other way. You've got to toss this thing out. Well, you it's can a, hear. I mean, it's a no contest at this point. What else are you going to do? There are referees in the ring attending to Andrew Thomas, and they have come out there, and Andrew was out, and I think due to the dire situation with him, they had to DQ this. It's gone out of control. They're out of the building, Mike. They are completely out of the building. You're right, double disqualification. Referee Andrew Thomas knocked out. No way to settle it between these two. To the back, JB. I think he's with Conan. Go, JB. We're set for tag team action up next here at Victory Road. Ron the Truth Killings and Sanjay Dett set to take on the Latin American Exchange. Ron the Truth Killings was invited to be part of the LAX movement, part of the cause, part of the revolution. But that punk ass bustard decided to be a sellout just like Sanjay Dutt. But let me tell you something, LAX was stronger than ever, and we're coming over after those tag team titles. Jim Cornette had the audacity to come out here and say, soon we'd be working at Jiffy Lube. Well, I got something you can lube in a Jiffy, Jim Cornette. See, the work stoppage, that played right into our hands. Now we're on a pay-per-view, and we're going to show and prove. See, we're going to take over. There's 11 million illegal aliens in this country, and they didn't ask for permission. They, wouldn't, they didn't wait around for permission. They took what was there, just like LAX. We've taken over Los Angeles. Houston, Dallas, Miami, now we're coming to Atlanta, the Birmingham, the Nashville, and TNA. Gringos asquerosos, all you white boys out there that don't understand Spanish. Well, guess what? In the next few years, you better be speaking Spanish because we're taking over. Déjame decirte una cosa. Si le gustan o no le gustan, somos los mejores en la lucha libre. Órale arriba, la raza! with immigration reform that's dividing our entire nation. We're getting tired of being underpaid, underappreciated, and undervalued. You're using the airwaves to further your political agenda. The only thing that power respects is power. And from here on out, if we gotta be violent, that's what we're gonna be. What's really going what on do you here? think you're doing, man? You don't see these flags? Huh? You don't see these signs? Huh? You don't see this line right here? This is the LA border. If you ain't Latino, stay the hell out! The beat goes boom, 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 la canción va boom, 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 and the beat goes boom, 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 la canción va boom, boom, boom. Yo digo una, una palabra, la canción dame la pluma, y yo te doy el reggaeton, yo digo una, una palabra, la canción dame la pluma, y yo te doy el reggaeton.
A work stoppage means a check stoppage. If you don't like that decision, I understand Jiffy Lube continues to be hiring. The part where the party starts. Ain't no need to front you with El Padre, El Hijo y El Espíritu Santo. It's all good, man. This guy's family. You're my brother. That's what's up! With all that ability, all that natural charisma, and they've shown you what they think about you. Nothing. I'm some to these damn people. This company does not look at talent. They look at race. And that's why they hold us back. Don't keep sacrificing your honor to play these little white boy BS games. There's nobody in this company that I got more love for than you, you, you. something right now this introduction listen is gonna be made in espanol solamente now for all you gringos that are not smart enough to speak two languages like me that means spanish only okay Se pone de pie, señal de respeto, por ahí viene lo más grande que ha dado Latinoamérica, Donald Thomas Hernández, el Latin America Exchange. Is he done? Is it okay for us to talk now? I mean, you talk about hijacking a program, about taking this thing over. It's exactly what Moody Jack Melendez from the Spanish broadcast position has done. And here comes the Latin American exchange. You know, they decided to take a totally different tack to gain the attention of TNA management. In the wrestling business, it's usually the squeaky wheel that gets to grease. You know, look at that recent situation. Monty Brown, Rhino, those open challenges. But behind the leadership of Conan, the LAX, they decided to shut things down. A work stop, and that got the attention of TNA management's Jim Cornette. He said, if you continue your work stoppage, there's going to be a check stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, their opponents first. From Bombay, India, Sanjay Dutt. I'll tell you, he's going to be the speed that's going to be needed out there when you have the strength of Hernandez and you have the thuggery that you've got with Homicide. This guy's going to have to be quick and it's going to have to be sharp. And his tag team partner from Charlotte, North Carolina, Ron the Truth Killing! Well, Sanjay Dunn is Over a there, what's up? They may not have a lot of experience together as a tag what's up? team. What's up? As we what's hear up? from the truth. What's up? You can get with this. You can come get with this, cuz. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? If you feel me, stand up and say what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? You can get with this. You better come get with this, cuz. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And damn sure we ain't hold on We're getting the long version. Well, first it was Moody Jack, and now it's the truth. Okay, the coast clear. Yeah. Let me know. I don't know. They might flip Somebody this album over. Somebody let me know. Can I talk? You're on, baby. Here we go. I mean, think about it. 
think about the truth in Sanjay as a tag team. Yes, here comes LAX. Yes, what we expected, that gang mentality, even before the opening bell. You know, they may not have the same personal interests outside the ring when it comes to this tag team, but I think they do have one thing in common. Oh, wow. my goodness, what a great move by Sanjay. Flip dive out to the floor. We're going to call this. Homicide's going to fly. Oh, man, he just shot through the rope. Suicide dive right on to Sanjay. He landed on the concrete, and Homicide got right back on. Wow. What a way to start. Right. Look at that. What a brawl. We expected no less. You know, Mike, they may not have the experience of the tag team, but they've experienced the wrath of LAX. Oh, so screw it. Let's not tell the backstory. Let's just watch this match. Wow. You're right. What a way to start. I'm trying to tell stories, and there's bodies flying all over the impact zone. Wow. Well, you could just see the hatred in the faces of LAX. They just, like you said, they got that gang mentality, but man, the truth and Sanjay bonding together like what they had to deal with with these guys and the disrespect that LAX has showed them. And it's just turned out into another fight, another war like we just saw with Rhino and, and Monty Brown that was ruled a no contest earlier. You know, I was going to talk about how they were both minorities. They made it on their own here in America. The truth from the streets to a two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion and an accomplished rap artist. Sanjay. He juggled a full-time wrestling career along with a full-time school schedule, recently graduating from George Mason University. It's quite an interesting contrast when you compare the styles of both of these teams. Mike, between you and me, that was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Check out this backslide. Oh, here we go. Homicide <laughs> on the truth. Barely got the two count. Killings quickly back up to his feet and elevates homicide overhead. And rather two killings, the former world, former two-time world champion can do so many things. This guy could be an excellent champion if he wanted. And I believe that him and Sanjay Dutton, we've talked about former dream tag teams in the past. They are such a unique blend of athleticism and speed that if these guys get it together, they could be a force here as a tag team at DNA. Look how they're working together. Hernandez sent out to the floor. The double drop kick on Homicide leads to a pin attempt for Sanjay and a near fall for Slick Johnson. But on the same Trent, look across the ring and look at that team. Look at Hernandez and Homicide. And they provide that unique blend on the size, strength, and power of Hernandez. The speed of Homicide, but Sanjay comes for the cover and Homicide powers out at two. These guys have a chip on their shoulder, not just the way they feel they're being treated by management and TNA, the way they feel they're being treated by American citizens in this country. And they wear that chip with pride almost. Oh. They almost like being disrespected because it motivates them. It's what, it, you, it's what they use to drive themselves on. And don't, don't think anything less of the ability of Homicide and Hernandez because let me tell you something, these guys have been stars all over this country. And Homicide right there has been somebody, everybody oh. has been anticipating here on pay-per-views. And you're getting a first-hand glance at the skills of these guys with that. And he just drops Sanjay Dutt, throat first, his windpipe right across that top steel cable. And when you're talking about the Latin American exchange, when you have a leader like Conan, well, let's just, let's be honest, there's nobody more outspoken in the wrestling business than Conan. Hernandez just overpowered Sanjay. Watch the quickness, however. Sunset flip, can he get the big man over? He just doesn't have the strength right there. He went a little too far. Look at the strength of Hernandez. I mean, he just flipped him over like a rag. Damn, that was impressive. I'm sorry, man, that was impressive. I mean, what you've been hearing from Conan over the course of the past couple of months, representing the Latinos in the Latin American exchange, quite honestly, it's something that we've heard from Conan on for an awful long time. I mean, it's his agenda. Well, I've been trying to have a conversation with him, and we both respect everything Conan's done in this business. You have to. And how intelligent he is, but it's hard to even have a quick pin attempt. Sanjay able to get up, and it looks like he's hurt holding the back of his head, holding his arm. But what I'm just saying about Conan, it's just, you're always afraid you're gonna offend him. If you say one thing, he takes the wrong way, he slaps, and it's hard to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with the guy. Like I said, they just, they use this disrespect they feel they're getting, and they use it to drive themselves You know, he has that platform now, really, to spout his agenda and all of his rhetoric, and he's really doing that, and making a name for himself as well as Homicide and Hernandez. Sanjay able to land on his feet, quickly shoves Homicide, oh, and they just snaps it off. Oh, I've always called Sanjay Dutt the best X Division athlete that's never held that title. Man, wow, that was brutal. 
by Homicide as it looked like Sante was getting momentum. Did he get pinned? No, he got it up. Oh, man. Homicide and then bringing him over. And putting him in there in that figure four, and then you bring in Hernandez. Oh, elbow. T-boned him with the suplex, scissored his legs, enabling Hernandez, when he made the tag as the legal man, to take over with Sanjay in the defensive position down on the mat. Yeah. Hernandez charged to the corner, but Sanjay, the quickness again, able to move out of his way. The Enzigiri rocks him momentarily. Look at this. Oh, again, he got caught up in oh. the strength of Hernandez. He needs to get a tag. It's done. Oh, and the truth not going to let it be done. I think he realized it was over and he had to break it up. Desperation move by the truth, breaking up the pin just before Slick Johnson, able to drop the hand down for the three count. Hernandez tags in homicide. Well, Conan's tutelage, his strategy, his game plan, it's pretty sound. We're seeing it unfold right here, Don, oh. right in front of us. It's not only the quick tags, but you know this is part of that game plan as well. While the referee's distracted, Sanjay tossed out to the floor, and Conan is having his way with him face first, right into the steel steps. I mean, look at that. Two quick shots back into the ring. Homicide. And Homicide. referee Slick Johnson doesn't even see it, doesn't know it, and there's Sanjay right back where he was. Probably heard Conan calling out the homicide that he just rolled the prone body into the ring. The homicide goes for a pin, but still some life left here in Sanjay Dutt. Well, and for us that don't speak two languages like Moody Jack does, obviously we didn't know what Conan was saying to him. The original player from the Himalaya, direct to TNA from Bombay, India, in trouble as a result of the beatdown here from the Latin American Exchange. To the corner, Sanjay. Desperation, able to get the boots up as Homicide charged in, caught him a second time. Is the bull gonna come a third time? Oh, nice move right there. Sanjay, I think, playing a little more hurt than he was. Now he's got the speed and now the tag, and what a move. And get ready to rock and roll with the crew. Explosiveness of killing. Right hand, Homicide down. There's one for Hernandez, and he rocks Homicide. Gonna follow up now with him. Quick reversal, Killings sit to the ropes. That flying forearm, boy, that thing is deadly. It is, but then again, there's a help of the quickness. Hernandez just showed it his strength, but man, look at that agility. That athletic ability, he just is amazing. Rolls through. Oh, how about that? I think that's a message for Conan. That's Conan's move, the rolling thunder That's exactly what it was. Oh, he did, and he went back there and put it in his face. But nice move right there behind the side, but again, on the two killings, able to deflect it, get out of the way. The truth, showing why he's a former two-time champion. He gets leveled on the Here's the pin right attempt. Here's two. two. Oh. Whoa. I mean, think of the history between Conan and Ron the Truth Killings. Those years as part of the three live crew tag team until we saw what went down on Impact recently when Conan brought the truth over to the LAX area, the Spanish broadcast table, and they just laid him out. Homicide One, pin two. two. Man, Homicide and Hernandez have been working together so well. We've waited so long to see them together that you didn't know what to expect. And these guys have been a well-oiled machine. Even when, like, the truth turns things around, these guys are able to work together and get it back in their favor. Here comes Homicide to the corner. Killings gets the elbow up, placed it right in his chest. Now, the truth will perch up on that middle rope. And Homicide looks like he has the advantage. Going to try and follow it up. And what's he going to do here? Going to try and suplex him in. Killings fighting him off. Notice that Killings hooked that top rope with his hand. The homicide showing no fear. He's not intimidated uh, by the resume that Ron the Truth Killings has. And oh, look at the strike right there of the truth. And what a way to face plant him off the rope. Homicide. Here it is. Here's two. two. Oh, Hernandez just before the three count. Wow. Just in time. Oh, nice shot there by the truth, though, to make sure don't ever turn your back on him as the message he's sending Hernandez right there. Homicide to his feet. Killings is ready, but there's the jawbreaker from Homicide. Blind tag. Sanjay's legal. Slick Johnson saw it. Homicide never saw Sanjay. Missile drop kick to the back, but look at the quick tag for Hernandez. Man, that's just thinking on, on the move right there. Homicide, nice tag. And Sanjay just having so much trouble gauging the strength of Hernandez. Everything he does, everything he tries to do, He's having so much trouble, with, but now I think what you gotta do is try to get him with agility, and that's what he's done. Well, check this out, walking right by the broadcast table, and you probably just heard that sound. Homicide picked up a steel chair, just smashed it against the side of the ring. Oh, he threw it in, oh! What a move by the truth! Twisting, turning, and Sanjay going for the pin, but the truth saw the chair. 
and the truth takes out Homicide outside of the ring. Oh, what a corkscrew cross body block that was. Sanjay to the top floor, high risk. Conan just hit him with that slapjack. Oh, you could see Sanjay fall back, and he's just fighting now, but he's got to be seeing stars in us. Hernandez has him, and oh, no. He's knocked oh, down. Look at that guy. He just threw him all the way across the ring, Mike. He's already oh, knocked down. Two. The three count second, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is the Latin American Extreme. Oh, boy. We've got a tag team on our hands here in TNA by the name of the LAX. I'm going to say this. The other tag teams here in total non-stop action wrestling, brothers, you better take note. Absolutely, I saw what you saw the whole wow. so Look at the strength of Hernandez. This, my God! I need to do that with your arms behind you like that and just bug him all the way, run the two killings, can't believe it, but there was nothing Sanjay could do. He got smacked so that flat yet. It's the road to victory, four-way matchup later tonight at the pay-per-view. One of those four men, Scott Steiner. Let's hear from JB. Go, JB. Coming up later tonight, it's the road to victory, four-way matchup, and my guest at this time competing tonight in this match. Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner set to do battle tonight. So you call it a four-way, but everybody knows it's gonna come down to me and Sting. See, ever since I've been here, I've been, my job was to take Sting out, and I've done that. But tonight's unfortunate small Joe and Christian Cage are gonna be casualties of war. See, everybody knows every time that small Joe's gotten a ring with me, he's half the man I am. But he starts hating on me, because I call him a fat bastard. But don't hate on me, small Joe. Hate your parents, because they gave you an extra fat soul, fat cell in your X and Y chromosome. See, but tonight it's going to be easier than all time. He's going to, the ring is going to be that way, and I'm going to have a line of donuts going that way. Everybody knows that fat son of a bitch can't deny himself a creamy crust donut. As far as Christian Cage, he says it's his time, his area. Christian Cage wants to take your time to go to the gym, maybe work out, eat a steak, stick man. I tell you what, it's your time to go back to Canada, the place we call Mexico North. Then when Sting, you've been playing this game of one-upmanship, but this game you've been playing is checkers, and we've been playing chess. And tonight, you're going to find out how ruthless I'm going to be. Tonight, somebody's going down in defeat, and I'm coming out the victor. Well, if you're the victor, that means it's you and Jeff Jarrett next month. Do you think I care who I wrestle? I have no friends in this business, outsider or in. Ladies and gentlemen, making their way into the impact zone, Coach Scott Diamore, the Canadian enforcer Bobby Roode, Petey Williams, A1, Showtime Eric Young. They are the former members of Team Canada. Take one last look at the group and one last listen to O Canada, the Canadian national anthem that always signified their arrival. Well, this was something that you saw coming in. Jim Cornette acted fast, he acted quick, and then he even showed some heart and gave him another chance. But it, as you'll see here coming up, as we show you some footage of what happened on Impact, their last match together as a team. This was the second chance that Jim Cornette gave to Team Canada. There you see the gore from the war machine that enabled Jay Lethal to hit that diving dynamite headbutt off the top. He gets the three count. Jay Lethal gets a title match, but Team Canada, because of the loss, they are forced to disband. Take a look at the reactions this past week on Impact of the Canadians. Oh, there it goes, oh. Florida! Of the wrestling. Tonight is the last night you'll ever see Team Canada stand in this ring together. Oh, you really think that's great, don't you? Well, the reason that this is the only time you're going to see us in here again is because of one man's ignorance. And that's that no good, self-serving Kentucky Fried Idiot, James E. Cornett. Well, James E., I know you know the old saying, 
Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Keep singing. You see, you think this is the end of Team Canada, but this is the beginning of something so much larger. You ignorant sons of bitches! What do you think, Don? Sing along with the crowd here at the Impact Zone. Bobby! Bobby Roode! You are the greatest pure athlete I've seen in this or any other sport. Well, I mean, he is a great athlete. Whether you like the association with Demore and, and Team Canada that, or not. You accepted your role as the enforcer in Team Canada. You were selfless and you were the glue that held this team together. But you know what, Bobby? It's time for you to look out for number one. I don't know if you realize this, Bobby, but you are the hottest free agent in wrestling. My phone's ringing off the hook. Every great mind in this sport wants to guide your career. So you see, Bobby, it's not a matter of whether you'll do great. It's just a matter of time until people are calling you the NWA world champion. You know, everybody talks about me getting all red in the face Bobby, and about thank to explode. You for everything. Look at Scott Demore's face. He looks like he's ready to pop. Emotional moment for the Canadians. The Canadian enforcer Bobby Roode with his goodbyes for Petey Williams and A1. And oh, there's Mr. Jittery himself over there, that, that unconfident pessimist, Eric Young. Well, he gave him a high five, and you know what? I got to agree with the, th the one thing that Scott Demore said. That guy has a lot of skill and a lot of charisma in Bobby Roode, and who knows? Maybe this would be a good thing for him. And a lot of upside. Hey, oh, you people be quiet! We're trying to have a moment here! They seem to like Eric Young. I think they're glad he's free. Eric Young still doesn't know how to handle the praise. I've coached, trained, and managed a lot of individuals in this sport. And there's never been one that impressed me so much, that touched me so deeply, that I cared about to the point that I called them my son. And I named that son of mine the captain of Team Canada. And I never could have been prouder of any son in the world. You have showed grit, you showed heart, and you were a leader in every sense of the word. But Petey, it's time for you to get back to what you were meant to do. It's time for you to show true dominance in the X Division. And Petey, when you're X Division champion, I want you to remember one thing. I'm never more than a phone call away, because one thing will never change, and that's I love you, kid. Somebody give me a Kleenex. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of tearing up out oh here. Oh, my God. Oh, even Damore. Look how weepy, weepy he is. Oh. Bring a tear to a glass eye. Well, I didn't think he had a soul. in that strip club and I said I was gonna bring you and make you a member of Team Canada so you could be the muscle. Well never once did I doubt that you gave us everything you had. Ah oh, shut the hell up! Never once was I disappointed with your performance and never once did I regret my decision. He sure as hell could kick your asses! Now, A1, we're 
we've come to the end of the road now for now. But I know that you'll be okay because you're a physical specimen and you're a great athlete. And all that's left to say for now is thank you. The muscle man of Team Canada A1 turns down the handshake from Eric Young. Oh, there's resentment with all the Team Canada members with Eric Young. Well, but there's none from the fans yeah. for Eric Young. Let, let's hear what he's got to say about that Eric Young now. Us only one thing. Super Eric. Super Eric. Is Scott gonna show some kindness here? Super Eric. Hey, you gotta be pretty happy with yourself, Eric. Not, not really, no. Nah, come on, honestly, I know you're modest, but you gotta be pretty happy with yourself. For what? Well, hell, everything that's happening here, Eric, is because of you. What? what? I didn't. Why, I didn't do anything. Yeah, it's because of you. It's because of your paranoia. It's because of your self-righteousness. It's because of your ignorance. It's because of your arrogance. Whoa. You make me sick, Eric Young. What does he really feel? He's placing the blame on Eric Young. Do you remember what you were when I found you? Just a fat kid from Florence, Ontario, and I took you, I trained you, I molded you, I brought you here, and I made you Showtime, Eric Young, and you made an idiot out of me for it. We disbanded because of you, damn it, Eric. Team Canada was a family, and you split us up, you tore us apart, you ripped us to shreds, and you make. Me sick. We disbanded because of you? All the blame on Eric Young from Coach Damore. And you could tell Eric you know what? The, the trembling in his lip. He can't believe what he's I hearing. I can't even stand to look at you wear that jacket. Give me that team jacket, Eric. What? Give, Give him the, me the team jacket. jacket. He's asking for the Team Canada jacket back. Come on, you're not a member of Team Canada. There isn't a Team Canada. Hey, wait a second. Those are Team Canada pants. I gave you those pants. Team Canada Give pants? Give them back to me. Give me my pants back. Give me my pants back. Oh, I know what. I mean, come on. Oh. Listen, it's about humiliation. <laughs> He's got. What happened to the socks? He's got two different socks on. Notify the fashion police. <laughs> well, he is Canadian. Look at you. Oh. You make me sick, Eric. Scott, you, you gotta help me, man. You gotta save me. Well, Eric, I don't think you get it. Nobody can save you. I can't save you. Your buddy Don West can't save you. Your little metrosexual pal Jeremy Boras can't save you. And don't you dare look at these troglodyte morons out here, cause they can't save you either. It's over. Team Canada is over. Your career in TNA is over. There's nothing you people can do. We will save you. We will save you. You know what I see standing in front of me? That same fat little kid I saw all those years ago. And Eric, one last thing. Despite everything that's gone on, Despite everything that's happened, I still have a soft spot here for you. So I want you to understand one thing. And this comes from the bottom of my heart, Eric. I want you to be ready. Because real soon, your deepest, darkest fears are going to come true, Eric. Because real soon, your ass is going to be fired! Exclamation point.
man, I'm telling you, the things that Scott DeWard said, the only thing I'm glad he didn't say was he wanted a Team Canada underwear back. Can you imagine placing all the blame on Eric Young? Just not right. That kid is, maybe he is a little paranoid, but he, he bled red. I mean, he, his heart was with Team Canada all the way. You're right. I mean, as jittery as he was, as much as he lacks confidence, that was always the one thing that you knew. Eric Young was Team Canada. What? Wait a minute. I think he wants to maybe address the crowd here. Guys, I don't know if you guys know it, the truck or not. Eric Young just picked up a microphone. You might want to drop that Canadian music. What's he going to say here? Do, oh, do you guys want me to be fired? Wait, wait, do you, do you think I should be fired? No! Can you not understand what they're saying? Will, will, will you guys help me then? Yeah! Well, that's unanimous. You'll be my friends? Yeah! We're going to adopt him here, right here in the impact zone. Okay, okay, the plan's set then. The plan's set. Uh, it's going to be our own secret plan. And wait, wait, don't fire Eric, we'll be our own. Hey. I mean, the C and I Secret with everybody. mission. Let him hear it. Don't fire Eric. Don't fire Eric. Don't fire Eric. Don't fire I think he won the people over. What do you think? Play it in. Underwear and all. Big back socks. There he is celebrating with his new family. The impact zone. Oh, yeah. at this time is the current X Division champion of the world, Sen Shi, and boy, what an unbelievable couple of months it's been for you since joining TNA. Unbelievable? What's so unbelievable about it? When I came to TNA, I came here with a game plan. I came here to win and to become the new X Division champion. Mission accomplished. Well, tonight you have an X Division title defense against a mystery opponent. Oh, a mystery opponent. A former X Division champion. A former X Division champion, representative of the past. TNA wants to put a mystery opponent in my way, so I'm gonna send him back in a lot worse condition. Whoever this mystery opponent is, whoever this former champion is, I dare you to take what's mine. It is the first of our two championship matchups tonight at the Victory Road pay-per-view. It's the X Division title, and it's on the line in this next matchup, and let's break it down with these bullet points. Let's break it down with the X Factors. With Samoa Joe sights on the world's title, with Styles and Daniels joining forces as a championship tag team, the door is open for the Young Lions to take over the division. To stir things up, TNA's new management rep, Jim Cornette, offers a mystery challenger, a former X Division champ who returns after a lengthy absence. Joe, Styles, Daniels, they're out of the picture. Senshi, Japanese for warrior, has emerged as an X Division force. Tonight, the warrior defends the gold at Victory Road. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA Victory Road continues with the following one fall contest for the X Division Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Los Angeles, California, Cold Syrian. Wow, Fournette's wow. done it again. Not just a former X Division Champion, a former two-time X Division Champion. His opponent from Brooklyn, New York. He is the defending X Division champion, Sushi! So much of the professional wrestling business is about timing. And I think Sushi's timing, wait, well, couldn't really be better. The opening is there, the door is open. Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, they really have their own different directions now. What a chance this is for Senshi to take over. And you just can't deny how great he has been since returning to TNA. Yes, another former X Division champion came right back in and won the gold. And now Senshi, formerly known as Loki, 
He is the warrior. He is the X Division title holder as Kazarian takes a look at the belt. You know, when you talk to Sinji about the Samoa Joe situation, he could care less that Joe's gone on to seek greener pastures in his mind in the heavyweight division. As far as Sinji is concerned, the X Division is his division. He came, he said he would take it, he said he'd wear the belt, and he is. And it's now a chance, like you said, Mike, for him to mold the X Division the way he sees fit. But he's gonna have his hands full because this is a man who's been dying to get back into TNA. A former X Division champion, somebody that understands what the X Division is all about, especially after he left it. And he wanted it so bad, and now he has a chance to get it again, and he's gonna be somebody fired up and an unknown to send she. Boy, I really think, Don, that that's the key, that thirst that Kazarian has to once again get right back in the mix of the incredible Red Hot X Division. And, oh, my, Sin Chi, here in the early going of this matchup, gonna try for a submission move with the arm breaker, even though he was wrapped around the ring ropes. You saw how Kazarian tried to put his two hands together, clasp them together and maintain that grip, not enabling Sin Chi to put all that pressure and spread that arm back. And oh, luckily for Kazarian that he did just that as Sin Chi went out to the floor, comes right back in and feeling out process here in the early going. That's one of the things that you always oh, have to be wow. careful of. You have to be wary of when you're wrestling Sin Chi. Anybody in wrestling have more educated feet than that look? Well, I mean, we've seen even Kazarian use his feet like nobody. We've seen James Storm, we've seen Matt Bentley, we've seen the phenomenal AJ Styles, but there's something about Senji that puts him above everybody when it comes to using the feet. He will hit you from places that you can't even imagine. He will do things, and you're gonna see it here. I can guarantee it. He will do things just like that out of nowhere. The feet, the legs, they're an extension of his body like nobody else. And he has just got that martial arts training and it comes to fruition out here in the ring every time. For the past four years, you and I have talked about the improbability of an AJ Styles. Yeah. We've been so impressed with that. But boy, in Senshi, you see that similar mindset where he comes up with those kicks just absolutely out of nowhere. There's really no way that you can prepare for anything like the stiff, brutal, lethal kicks of the X Division title. Race. And I don't even think it's things that he thinks about. I mean, it's just so natural, you know, it's, it's, it's just a part of him, it's just what he is, and it's something that is so hard to prepare for if you're taking on Sinchi in the ring. You know, I, I believe it's a situation where if you did think about it, by the time you're thinking about it, that gives your opponent an opportunity to prepare. You know, I mean, I've heard the, the comments, though, that Samoa Joe never pinned, never submitted. You know, you ask Sinchi, he'll tell you that Samoa Joe never pinned or made him submit either. Shoulder block, oh, oh, there there you go. Little bad mouth for Senshi got right in his face. And what happened? Oh, it's, it's so fast, man. It oh, just, just remembers you. Of, of, remember, remember, oh, God. remember Joe Wallace, how quickly he could get to like three times in a second? That's how this guy is, man. I mean, just out of nowhere. Bam. Stiff shots right to the chest of Kazarian with the boot. And then the knife edge chop to the chest. Kazarian going to fight back. Series of chops here. Well, you've just got to be able to handle pain if you're going to take on Senshi because he's going to apply it to you. And Kazarian's a former champ. He's, he's going through Ultimate X. He's going through some pretty incredible things here in TNA and came out victorious. He's not going to be intimidated. He may be impressed and have a lot of respect, but he won't be intimidated. Great move when he lands on his feet, comes right back, spinning neck breaker in mid-ring. Rock Senshi, the warrior down, shoulders hold barely a one count from the senior official Rudy Charles. You know, you look out there and you see Kazarian and he's, he's got the shortened haircut and you, you remember the long locks True. down the back and it's it's a different Kazarian and that's what he's going to be here. And I mean, it's somebody that's focused himself to getting back into the X Division and having conversation with him. He said he missed the X Division so much. He missed that, that competitiveness, that respect that these guys had, to the code of the X Division. And you know he's glad to be back, but man, what a first tough match they have to face, that being the X Division champ. Suplex attempts repeatedly blocked by Senshi, and finally, oh, Kazarian gets him up in the air. Notice how Senshi just countered it right in mid move and then hangs him out to dry right across the top rope. I mean, just snapping those knees off. I mean, it was incredible. Just the knees, bam, bam. I mean, it's it's just it's a sight to watch. You've got to get the momentum on Senshi, and you've got to keep it. Kazarian quickly powers out of the pin attempt by Senshi, but boy, he was rocked by the kicks and then draped over that top rope, shoulder right into the gut. Gonna take the wind away from Kazarian. That's pretty much the strategy here. He hits you with those moves though, like, I mean, you never see the shoulder block coming at that point. No, you don't. Oh. 
Kazarian's going to have to somehow get Senshi down and then maybe hit him with that vicious leg drop that he does off the top rope or when he was called himself the future, that flux capacity. Remember, right, I remember that, thing. that? Wow, he's going to have to do something devastating because if he doesn't, Senshi's going to eat him alive, and that's what he's doing right now. Out of the great Muda playbook with the twisting, pushing elbow drop, and then the body scissors. Back to the basics, but follow up. Check the strategy and the game plan of Senshi in this match. Well, that takes the air right out of you, too. Right, it falls right in the line with the other moves that he's been doing up to this point. And look, you can hear the pain. You can hear Kazarian scream the pain. And it's exactly what Senshi does. He wears you down, wears you down, and you have no defense. I think Kazarian really needs to get this match done off the mat. That's pretty obvious here. The, the, the leg strength of Senshi is so important. I mean, the, the hours that he puts in in the gym working on those kicks enables him to have strength to use that body scissors and then takes him up, drops him down, stomach first. Oh, man. And that's, that's just gut wrench right and across the knee. I mean, he already strained the, the, the ribs and strained the gut right there earlier with that move, and then he drops that part of him back on the knee. He, he knows how to take the air out of you, suck the air out of you, and then knock the air out of you again. And if you can't breathe out there in that ring, you can't form a plan. All you can do is try to survive. Kazarian has got to get some space between him and Senshi, and he's got to do it quickly or he's in trouble, and that's how you do it. Slam him with some elbows. Oh, but right into the gut again. Boy, it was a great point that you made. You're right, get that distance away from him so that Kazarian can play to his own strengths. Oh, God! Almost like a shotgun went off here when that boot made contact with the chest of Kazarian. But again, nope, not a three count from the champ. Senshi, another near fall, and another brutally stiff kick. Oh! Knife edge. Oh, right back at you. That's what you gotta do. Fight fire with fire. Just give him some back yourself. Let him know that you can take it. You've taken everything he's given you. Oh, what God. a shot! Right into the jaw! There's oh. that, oh, and then that hook kick to the back of the head. Here's the pin, the uh, lateral press two. You barely got the shoulder roll before the three. I mean, he's putting on a clinic right now, Mike. You're I feel right. like I'm watching a, a Bruce Lee movie here, or Quentin Tarantino movie right now. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's a wrestling and a martial arts clinic all rolled into one from the X Division title holder. You know, these moves are so basic like this one, Don, but so effective. Got to get back up to your feet, Kazarian. And pulling again on that gut right there. And yeah. Kazarian, he's just screaming, trying to get air through his lungs, trying to fight out, and he's just shooting him with elbows. And that's what you got to do. You got to use him like a sledgehammer and break the hold, and he can't do it. Yeah, those repeated shots having little or no effect. Senshi positions him against the ropes, and again, another knee to the gut. That clothesline missed. Oh, there you go. That's how you do it. You got to turn it quick, and he slams him on his head. Boy, there have been several occasions in this matchup where you and I both anticipated that Kazarian was going to turn this thing around against the champ, and every time we think that, he gets off maybe one or, or two offensive moves. Senshi cuts him right back down and, and turns it in his favor. That knee rocked him. Kazarian again. Oh, right at the jaw now. He's going right at... Right at the head of Senshi. And look at him come back. That's four straight shots to the face. Springing back off the middle rope. The elbow perfectly planted across the throat of Senshi. Watch him measure it. Kazarian charges in, and that kick just, just powered him, overpowered him, right into the corner turnbuckle. Again, right into the head of Senshi, and he's kind of hit him with one of his own moves right there, and he's just, I don't think Senshi realizes what's happening right now. He had it all, and maybe he got too confident, and then he just jams the feet right there into the chest of Senshi, and that'll take the air right out of you. Wow, this thing is turned around. Here comes the challenger. Can he roll him over and go for the pin? Two, Senshi, shoulder up before three. Kazarian, I mean, he was somebody that looked like he was never going to get the ball rolling, and it just took one moment, one moment where Senshi had his guard down, and one thing you got to give Kazarian here, he's not let up since he got this run, and look at Senshi holding onto the ropes for dear life. Yeah, Kazarian going to try and take him up overhead. Wisely, Senshi hooked the steel cables, hooked the ropes, not allowing him to go up. Kazarian tries it a second time, and a second time, Senshi maintaining his grip. That tells me that Senshi right now is reeling a little bit. He's just trying to, to get his... Oh, God! Oh, what a shot! Double foot stomp. 
You know, we've seen it off the top rope. But boy, the impact and power of that move. It, again, it's another factor in, in taking the air away from your opponent. Hutch drove it right into the chest of Kazarian. And another knee. Man, these are just brutally stiff. How did he even find the way to get the momentum to get up in the air? And man, since he, I think, saw it passing before him, once he saw the opportunity, and look at this, you can see Kazarian just holding on to the leg for dear life. That's the way to do oh, it. Oh, God. Look at this one shot after another. He is just, oh, oh man, he is finely tuned right oh. here tonight. Oh, man, like a football. He just kicked him as hard as he could. But amazing that Kazarian's even able to get back up to his feet. Oh, that's what you do. You let the momentum of the opponent work against him. And that's what he did. And he just cracked him with that DDT on the top row. Off right the DDT. The Two, no, got no, it, oh, God. God. man. Drape the arm across the chest. Referee Charles down for the count, but no, Sin Chi does not allow the three. You got two two-time X Division champions out there. Great to see Kazarian back, and now it looks like he's getting control right here. You can see what he was the trying for earlier. Oh, look at the elbows, right on the top of the head. You know, regardless of the outcome of this matchup, I think Kazarian now has to realize, oh, oh man, just how tough, just how competitive this X Division has become since he left TNA. Whoa, and a kick in the corner. Charged at him, caught him with both boots, drop kick in the corner, positions him out. Is he going to go for the Warriors way? He's going for the Warriors way right oh, here. That you, double th foot stomp. No, not from the top. Oh, if he hits it, it's done. There he goes. Oh, no! see you later. It's the move that Whoa. won him the title. It's done. It's the move that keeps the title for Senshi. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still X Division champion, Senshi. So one thing that I'm going to take out of this matchup, I think Kazarian, and I'm going to talk to him after the match, he now realizes how the level, how the bar has been raised in the X Division in TNA. It's a new era. It's a new era of the X Division. I not agree with you more. To the back, Jeremy Borash standing by with the living legend, Larry Zabisco. Up next here at Victory Road, a feud going back over a year now here in TNA, a match ordered by James E. Cornette, hair versus hair, you versus Raven. Oh, shut up, Borash. Do I look like I'm worried about this situation here? You know, after 33 glorious years, I'm in the best condition of my life. In fact, I forgot more about wrestling than Raven ever dreamed about learning. In fact, this idiot been picking on the wrong man, and now he's going to have to come and pay the piper. Oh, what do you want, you stupid stooge? Big Lair, can I have a moment of your time, yeah, please? Yeah, what? Buddy, I've got some good news, and I got some good news. Well, what's your good news, Slick? Well, the good news, Larry, is you don't have to do this match. No one's going to think bad of you, and it won't go on your record, but you could lose your job. Well, what's your real good news, well, Slick? the real good news is I'm your referee for tonight. That's not good news. That's bad news, you nitwit. That's great news. What kind of news is this? Because I'm an unbiased referee, and I call it right down the middle there, sir. Unbiased? What are you, the senior referee now all of a sudden? No, but I will be. Well, you brown noser, that's what your plan is. Larry, good luck tonight. Good luck. Let me tell you something, Slick. I'm taking care of Raven tonight, and you and me are going to have a man-to-man -man talk. Let me say this about Raven. You know, here's a crybaby. Zabisco, do you understand what a strange neighborhood it is up there? This punk can't handle the pressure. Zabisco, I've been scalped once before. See, I've lost a hair versus hair match. And if you recall, the blood poured down my skull as the razor blades dug into my scalp, taking pieces of flesh out, flesh I would never get back. I came from something called the old school. And one thing we hated was a generation which emerged after us that were crybabies. You cost me the world title, and ever since then, you have turned my life into a living hell. That were whiners. Most of my life, the voices in my head, they were kind of random. They said different things at different times. People are comparing something Raven and myself have in common. We were both heavyweight champions of the world. That's incorrect. Raven was a heavyweight champion of the world who got beat, who lost it. Like the heavyweight title he cries about, he also lost his dignity. And that is something, kid, that will never, ever happen to me. 
Somebody's getting there. Head shaved at Victory Road. Is it going to be the living legend Larry Zabisco from the championship committee or the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Raven? Let's find out. Hair versus hair. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is a hair versus hair match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he is a championship committee member, the living legend, Larry Zabisco. Oh, sure, he's most famous for an in-ring career that spanned 33 glorious years. Of course, highlighted by that memorable rivalry with his mentor, Bruno San Martino. A little preview look from the ringsiders for Larry. But you know, here in TNA, he's not famous. He's infamous for what he's done outside the ring. The most visible member of the championship committee. Let's just say he's found himself in the middle of several questionable activities. And his opponent from the Bowery, Raven. This guy may be the most devious, sometimes the most despicable, the most cunning, former champion we've ever seen here. And you know, he mentioned it earlier. There, a lot of people can't figure out what's going on in that mind, but one thing we do know, he's diabolical, and he's not afraid to sit in that barber chair. He's had his skin gouged out in that barber chair, actually in the middle of the ring. So he's not intimidated by it, and I think that gives him a major advantage. We talked about Zabisco's questionable activities. It ranged from the controversy in Canada that cost this man, Raven, his NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. And how about Zabisco's actions at Slammiversary that cost Christian Cage the gold? In the eyes of Jim Cornette, Zabisco, he has been absolutely guilty. And I think, I think Cornette really would have fired Larry, but that ironclad contract, it prevented that. Cornette's option makes Zabisco's life a living hell, and what just happened there? Well, you saw Slick Johnson trip Larry Zabisco right there in front of Raven, but Raven just kind of turned it around, but now he's going for a quick mid shot, and Slick Johnson obviously making this match a little hard there for Larry Zabisco if he didn't have enough trouble. But you know what, I've always felt that Raven got the bad end of that deal. I always felt that it was a situation there where Larry Zabisco had it out for Raven. For some reason, he put him in his sights and he was gonna do everything he could to get him out of there and it wasn't right. It wasn't right, I don't think, what happened to Raven when he lost the title. And Raven, someone who's had to live with what Larry Zabisco, the, the pain he's caused him. This is something that I, I know that he's been thinking about for a long time, but one thing you can't deny is the experience that Larry has. Think about the controversy in Canada. Think about Slammiversary, both incidents. Who profited? Jeff Jarrett. Both times became champion. You know, Jarrett says he had nothing to do with the actions of Larry Zabisco, nothing to do with the actions of Earl Hebner. He even said he was going to take a polygraph test to prove that as the living legend with the blatant chokehold on Raven, then goes for the pin, but not even a count from Slick. Oh, I believe Jeff Jarrett, don't you? Wink, wink. Yeah, right. Most hated man in wrestling, Jeff Jarrett? Sure, let me jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, I'd like to see that polygraph. The spinning toehold applied by the living legend Larry Zabisco, trademark move of Dory Funk Jr., who, by the way, the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, in attendance here at the Victory Road pay-per-view event, but Raven fights off. Raven right there in pain. You can see the, oh, and Larry Zabisco goes right back at the leg, showing his experience right there. He goes back at it again. I don't think this is what Raven expected, to see this kind of fire from Larry Zabisco. Smart move, though. Chop Raven down, go for the cover, even Slick Johnson with the count. Larry not happy with the cadence from Slick. Well, I think Larry also realizes he doesn't have a friend and an ally there in Mark Johnson. And, but look at this, just pulling on that leg, torquing it back, and you can hear Raven screaming in pain. Pressure applied right to the ankle by the living legend Larry Zabisco. The 30 plus years of experience in the ring, enabling him to have Raven totally on the defensive here early in the going just being awful methodical about it, and he knows that, you know, he can't get into a, a duration contest. He didn't break those out. kicks. I mean, he's got the arm held up. Oh, but oh. he didn't block that one. That was the one that came through. Slick went down as well. Well, the longer this goes, it's advantage, Raven. You and I both Has know that. To be. Absolutely, the longer this matchup goes, you're right. He gets the edge. Zabisco gonna try and stop it here with a pile driver. It's countered by Raven, ready for a DDT. Man, right on the head. He's been dreaming of that. But now Slick Johnson holding the knee right there, and you'd think he'd be jumping over there to make the cover. 
But obviously he really caught his knee hard and didn't realize that Raven hit the, the Raven effect and had the pin. You're right, he had Zabisco down for the three count. And got many, oh, low blow by Zabisco. Yeah, illegal but effective behind the back of the referee. Slick never saw it. Zabisco gonna go for a cover out of this. Remember, hair versus hair here. Raven's hair on the line. Just got the shoulder up. Tell you what, Larry Zabisco's used every trick that he could think of, working on the legs, doing everything he could to keep him from being grounded. Now, going at the referee, and look at there, the roll up by Raven. Shoulders oh, down, two, two. no. Oh. I think Zabisco frustrated at this point after the collisions. Look at this. Him being down, small package, no. Yeah, you're right, you could see it. And, and you know, it's been a, it's been a mission of of Mark Johnson, Slick Johnson, to get Larry Zabisco out here or to embarrass him, and there's oh. another one. Oh, there's, what an incredible DDT. Even effect two, Done. and three, he got the three count, we're gonna shave Zabisco's head. Think he feels a little bit of payback at this point? Do you think Raven's gonna enjoy this? Oh, are you kidding? He's been dreaming of this. A way to get back, a, a little bit of revenge, a way to humiliate. The committee member that Larry Zabisco and that the power that Larry Zabisco overused, that he abused, and he abused it at Raven State. The barber chair is in place. You can see Raylene right here, ready to go. Ready to wait a minute. Whoa, you can whoa, see Larry whoa, Zabisco. Whoa, whoa. Come on Where back, Larry. Think he's going. Come on back, Larry. Whoa. Gonna try and get out of town. The Gonna try and leave the impact zone. The good news is he gets to keep his job. I mean, that was always an option. Yeah, the bad news is he's gonna be bald doing it. Oh, boy. Zabisco heading to the back, and Raven in pursuit. Here goes oh, Raven. Oh, that's right here. Security bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know about 33 glorious years, but this is not too glorious. Where's Ra what's Raven doing? I, I look like he grabbed some duct tape or something underneath. Make sure Larry Zabisco doesn't do this again. Oh, right here in front of the broadcast position. Zabisco fighting, but I mean, there's 10 security guys surrounding him. Well, after taking that DDT on the head, he's not gonna have enough strength to fight these guys off. But you know what? As we've seen with a lot of people, your, your hair can be so important to you, and maybe what little he has left. I mean, I think he's afraid that if you take off what Lily's got, maybe none of it will ever grow back. <laughs> Raven using the duct tape to hold Larry into position. What is Wiping the sweat off. That's what it is. And she hosts, oh, she gives him the shears. What? Raven wants to do this himself. Oh, oh no! no. Raven going into business for himself, starting with the back. He's going right to the top with the trim. Look at this. I didn't realize he had such nice locks in the back, did oh, you? He's got the shears on Zabisco, who's crying out. He's screaming at him, and he's just taking it one shot at a time. Just, oh, look at it go. Oh, man, look how deep. Oh, taking it right down. Oh, oh I don't want the hair on this desk. I'll tell you what, he's being a lot more gentle than... Jim Mitchell was to him so many years ago. I'll give you that. You know what, though? I still don't believe I mean, when you look at taking the hair off, I don't know that I see that much difference on top. Raven continuing now working on the back. Oh, he just loves it. It's like a trophy to him. I mean, it just. Oh, have fun, Zabisco. You look beautiful. Oh, it's Raven's loving this. Larry, He's fired. just loving it right now. You're all fired! You're all fired! Get him off! Oh, now he's shaving the chest hairs. And even Slick Johnson has come out here to cheer Raven on. Uh, he looks like Slick Johnson has a mirror in his hand. You know what? I almost kind of wish he could leave it like that and leave him with the bows hey, outside. Hey, take a look at this. Well, you're going to give me a shot? Yeah. Well, I can't. I'm hooked up here. Oh, you're going to have to move him back this way. I can't. I'm hooked up to the thing. Oh, let me get a shot. One good shot right there. Uh, if I wasn't hooked up to this, I'd be right over there. Zabisco hey. duct taped to the barber chair. <laughs> Look at Slick Johnson. He's loving it. Oh. I think he, he laughs so hard his stomach hurts. 
You're all fired! Listen, Zabisco keeps he's screaming, he's firing fired. everybody. He's firing everybody. He's firing five somebody. cameramen, you and me. Yeah, even Slick's gonna get Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> You're all fired! No, he's gonna get the, he's gonna trip some more. Are we going to the back now to JB? Are we gonna stick with us? What are we doing, guys? You're all fired! Hey. All right, to the back of JB with Kevin Nash. We're in the locker room backstage here at Victory Road tonight. The two of you, Alex Shelley and Kevin Nash, along with Johnny Devine in their corner, going to be well, Let me show you something, brother. Victories are important in pro wrestling, but tonight, X Division, more important. That's right, man. It's like the X Division champion himself said. It's a new era. It's a phoenix rising from the ashes, huh? Oh, X, X Division? Not about weight limits, but no. No limits. No limits! And if I may say something, Kevin, I haven't seen you this motivated since you beat that human jellyfish, Bob Back. Eight seconds! That's right, that's how fast it was. I haven't seen you this motivated since you let Hulk Hogan walk down the aisle, join the NWO, and be your young boy carrying your bags. He was the caboose. What do you got going? Hey, tonight, you guys got Sabin and Lethal. I got my directorial debut and the advanced copy, of the new X Division DVD that you're on the cover of, big man. Coming out in October, I am on the cover of it. Lethal Sabin, let me tell you something. Brother. Tonight, it's not about money, it's about pure competition. What this X Division was founded on. That's right, tonight, we're gonna bond as a team. We're gonna show you why we're the best there is. Do you wanna see that video? Yeah, I do, yeah, if you don't mind. How about seeing these? They're real and they're spectacular. All right, thank you very much. Tag team action later on tonight. I'm gonna announce tonight my uh, intentions of uh, going after the X Division. Are you serious? World Championship. Are you serious? I mean, AJ is with Daniels. Gone. He's gone. It's it's Busy. wide open. X Division soon to be champion is in front of you again today. We're really not at liberty to discuss that, but I will tell you one thing: Nash, he's gonna love it. And Kevin Nash just walked by. Oh, this is just absolutely this is, this is ridiculous. Crap. How you become a star? A mediocre, mediocre, mediocre big man will drop an X Division superstar every night of the week. Hey, 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 oh, right here in front of us. Oh, look at this. X Cup champion got nothing on me. He waits until one of these X Division wrestlers has been involved in a long match. Come on, man up. This time my back's not turned. Shots. Throughout the history of wrestling, humiliation has been used as a tactic to control your opponents. I pulled one out of the old wrestler's trunk. Oh. <laughs> the old body bag. I'm not picking up the doctor bills. I'm not paying for disability. If he asked for this, he's going to get it. Size doesn't matter. Division Tag Team Contest is scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one, accompanied to the ring by Johnny Devine, postman hail from Detroit, Michigan, Alex Shelley and Kevin Nash. Can you imagine what the legitimate, true X Division competitors think of Kevin Nash's nonsense? I mean, what would go through the mind of an AJ Styles, a Christopher Daniels, a Senshi, an X Division pioneer like a Jerry Lynn, when they hear this kind of crap from Kevin Nash. Oh, it's just been the total disrespect. It's been the lack of any, any class at all when it comes to the X Division. And their opponents first, from Hill, Michigan, In particular, for Chris Saban, the man who joins Jay Lethal for this tag team matchup. Saban, he's been humiliated repeatedly by Nash, put in the body bag. Everything for a laugh, Big Cab. It's just so funny. 
And of course, being joined by Jay Lethal, we had the kind of a, the announcement kind of went out there when Jay's name was being said, but these former members of Team USA, two guys that one thing they do know about, they know what it means to work together as a team. They know what it means to have to depend on each other. And you know, when you got a selfish guy out there like Kevin Nash and Alex Shelley, I, I, I give it advantage X Division right here. And, especially when they got the pride of the exhibition on the line. And how about Jay Lethal this past week on Impact? Right. By virtue of his pinfall win and the eight-man tag team matchup, not only Team Canada forced to disband, but Senshi, listen up, Jay Lethal guaranteed a title match this week on Impact on Spike TV of his choosing. Well, I sure hope he took notes in that Senshi matchup. I know he's been thinking about this and concentrating, but Senshi, awful. Impressive in that victory over Kazarian and Jay Lethal's got to think about what he wants to do with that title shot. And you can see Saban going out there right now. And man, he he's been humiliated. He's been put in a body bag. He's been embarrassed. And you know that he wants to just not just Kevin Nash, but that former teammate of his on Team USA, Alex Shelley. He wants to make him feel it. He wants to make him feel pain. You know, when I watch Alex Shelley wrestle, Don, I, I think back to the comments that we've made over the course of the past three years about Team Canada. Whether you like Team Canada and what they stand for outside the ring or not, you have to appreciate what they bring inside the six-sided ring. And I think Shelly, very similar situation. We're always so impressed with his in-ring abilities, his different style, it's so unique. He's certainly committed the hours and hours that he puts into videotape study, watching wrestling from Mexico, Japan, and Europe, to come up with just a different style than anyone else in the X Division and in TNA. You appreciate that, but then you see the association. You see when he's aligned with Kevin Nash. And it's a similar situation to Team Canada. Oh, he's good. I mean, the bottom line is he's just flat out good, and you're so impressed with what he can do out there. But it's the associations he moves. It's just. He, he's just somebody that you can't figure out what's going through his mind. And when you see him stalking Sting's family with the paparazzi cam and, and all the other things that he did when they stalked Christian's wife and filming Christian almost getting drowned, and you realize that he beats to his own drum, and maybe that's what makes this such a good alliance between him and Kevin Nash. I mean, I'm excited about the best of the X Division. I think volume two coming out October the 31st is the upcoming release date. But to hear Nash, how preposterous that garbage from Kevin Nash about how he's going to be on the cover of the TNA X Division DVD. Well, he's going to have to be a lot more impressive than he was in that victory. Yeah, pretty and he had over there at Sacrifice when he had it over there on uh, Chris Saban because this is a whole different ball game right here. Of course, he had the help. That was Shelly awesome that is time. what they're saying about Kevin Nash's one offensive move, but Lethal stops him. Look at him spring back now. Oh, man. Came up just short. Instead, turns it right into a pin attempt on Nash, who powers out. Well, the thing about Kevin Nash is he does have the bad legs. He's got the bad knees. And it's something that they've got to use against him in there. Chris Saban using his force to knock into Lethal right in action, going right after Shelley. Dropped toe hold for Shelley. Lethal follows with the elbow drop and then the basement drop kick delivered by Saban right into the face of Shelley. You're right, 13 knee surgeries, I believe, is the number that Kevin Nash has had throughout his wrestling and basketball career. Something you always have to take into account when you're involved in any kind of a matchup where Kevin Nash is one of the competitors. I will say this, though, about Kevin Nash. He understands that, you know, we have always said it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits, and we've seen Samoa Joe come in and, and tear up the X Division at times. If Kevin Nash wants to do the same thing, he's going to have to use what he has out there, the advantage he has, and, of course, that superior size and strength that he's going to have on these guys. But sometimes that's just not enough to combat the quickness. Oh, God. Just when we were putting over Alex Shelley about how much we appreciate what he does in the ring, he spits right in the face of Jay Lee. Hey, he's just he's warped, man. The guy is absolutely warped. You think he's going to get any better with the association with Nash? Oh, are you Hardly kidding? He's going to become an even bigger jerk. I mean, High, toss take over by Lee. Look at him. Oh, lands on his feet and unloads the drop kick. Jay Lee, man, this kid's got so much promise. He shows it every, every single night he comes out, gives it all, and oh, I just saw right there where Johnny Devine ran in there. 
Oh, nice and then caught Jay Lethal. He landed on the ropes. Look Shelley, at that. Shelly takes Slug. Saban out to the floor. Johnny Devine, and there's the crotch claw applied in mid ring by Shelly on Jay Lethal. Oh, man. That's just, again, he's so good he doesn't need to resort to these dirty tactics. But that's not going to stop him. Shelly and Devine forming the new tag team known as the Paparazzi's. They're recruited by Alex Shelley to help out with that ever-expanding Paparazzi's Productions. But what we're seeing here is the blatant interference. And now, face first goes lethal right into the boot of Kevin Nash. Pretty confident Kevin Nash circling lethal now. Going to pick him up right by the head and position him, of course, in the corner on his side of town and drive that knee. Oh, repeated shots right into the gut. Well, that's what he can do. I mean, if you get cornered, he can use that size, that muscle, and I mean, I don't care who you are. I mean, you know, it's the former world champion, and then if he gets it the way he wants it, it can dictate the match the way he wants it to go. He can make mincemeat of Jay Lethal right there in that corner, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, Lethal slowly gets back up to his feet only because he's helped up by Nash, who drives the elbow right into the head of the youngest man on the TNA roster, 20 years of age, Jay Lethal. Now, Shelly in. Drives the knee right into the gut. Nash just so happy with how he's how he's he's molded Alex Shelley. Almost in, in the same form of Kevin Nash. Oh, doing the same things, the same way that he would beat somebody. And again, it all started with the with the interference from Johnny Devine. Right. Something that you know Kevin Nash made sure he was in the right place at the right time. You had Jay Lethal going up for the high-risk move. Came down, caught the ropes in the wrong spot, and now the backbreaker right there by Kevin Nash. And then he keeps him right in the backbreaker position while Devine comes up on the apron to distract the referee, and Shelly with the drop kick to the head of Lethal. And right at the same time that Kevin Nash was choking him and throttling his head down. I mean, this is going textbook for Kevin Nash right now. Oh, it really is. The game plan of Kevin Nash, Alex Shelley, and John and Devine coming to fruition right before our very eyes. Now, Shelley holds lethal miscommunication there between Nash and his boy Shelley. Oh, he caught Alex Shelley right there with one of the same things. And now, Chris Saban comes flying out, takes the quick shot. Oh, that's how you bring him down, right on the knees. And then he rakes him across the face up there. Chris Saban on fire, and then he drills him in the head. Right, chopped down that big oak tree into the corner, and Shelley got the elbow up, and he just drilled Saban right in the face. Oh, Saban hangs him from the tree of woe. Oh, you ready for the hesitation drop kick? Look at this, he does it right off of the ah! top of Kevin Nash off of his back and just drills him. And then there goes Lethal. They're just making Mitch be one shot after another of Kevin Nash. First the diving dynamite off the top by Lethal. And then the guillotine leg drop by Saban. Now, ready for a little double team for Shelly. Oh, they're going right at Shelly as you see Kevin Nash I'm trying to get out of that ring. Oh, nice boot up though by Alex Shelly. And again, that's when you see the great, oh, but they catch him at the same time with a double drop kick. Great teamwork, double drop kick on target, suplex attempt blocked by Shelly. Couldn't block the ends of Geary, here it comes. Oh, just drops it right back on his head and, and look at Saban flipping over one. Ten, two, oh. moves out of the way and Devine crashes Shelly right in the jaw. There's one for Devine, courtesy of Lethal. Nash momentarily taken out of the picture. Ditto for Devine, courtesy of Lethal. Saban and Shelly is what it boils down to. Well, Jay Lethal holding one, and now Alex Shelly is up in the, could he get him in the cradle shot? Shelly fighting it off, rakes the oh. eyes and powers him down. Look how quickly he just kipped up to his feet and then the chop. Alex Shelly posing for a little bit, and he didn't realize the fire that Chris Saban had in him. Oh, but nice reverse kick right there. Just waited for him and timed it perfectly. And then off the road. Whoa. Another attempt at the cradle shot, and another Saban. block. Look at these guys. What an exchange. He, he, did it. he got it. He got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Chris Saban and Jay Lethal. Chalk one up for the X Division, the legit X Division. Saban and Lethal with the victory over Kevin Nash and Alex Shelley. Well, they showed you how it's done. They took the big man out. I mean, one shot after another on the big man. Hit him in the knee, hit him in the face. And now look at Kevin Ash looking around like he doesn't understand what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. It was precision. It was like a surgeon. They did it, they took you out.
And now they're showing you what the X Division is all oh, about. Oh, yeah, now they're just toying with Nash. This is about the speed. This is about the quickness of the X Division. And uh oh, here comes here comes Shelly and Divine back into the picture. Well, their their desire to take it out on Kevin Nash clouded their judgment, and they had their backs to the paparazzis, and the paparazzis came right in, and now it's three on two. Yeah, I see and what those this is numbers about. Never work. Ooh, what? That, that's Jerry Lynn, the X Division pioneer, who's an agent working for TNA. And you know what? what we talked about earlier. When you put the X Division on the map, somebody like Jerry Lynn, you can't stand in the back and see this crap go down. Look at him, he's putting the challenge out. He's not gonna have a, a, a division that he made famous here in TNA. Did you see what he just did? He just took his badge off, his employee badge. His badge is an agent. Jerry Lynn took it off and threw it down to the map. Uh, I mean, obviously he's saying, hey, I'm a part of this X Division. If you want me, come in and get me here as a wrestler, and you can see that badge laying there on the mat. The X Division pioneer Jerry Lynn checking on the condition of, of Saban and Lethal, but thank God he came out with the chair. To the back, JB standing by with Team 3D. We are backstage with all three members of Team 3D set to go into warfare against the James Gang and the six foot eight monster Abyss. Violence, 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 Borat, I'll give you one guess what tonight is all about. Violence? You're damn right it is. Team 3D and the James Gang have been tearing it down and kicking each other's asses for the past three months. We turn to our family, the littlest dog in the fight with the biggest heart and one tough SOB, our brother Runt. We told you to find a six-man partner. We thought that you would turn to your family and get the bullet, Bob Armstrong. But no, he's a decrepit old man. He's got one foot in the gutter and one in the grave, and nobody gives a damn about him anyway. You made a deal with the devil. You got the monster abyss. Good. Tonight is going to be about violence, and the three of you will fall to Team 3D. Somebody's going through a table. Boys, we've already proven that we're the best tag team. Now with the missing link of the family, we're gonna prove that we're the best six man. So get ready, cause you're about to get the ass kicking of your life, ha! Huh? Oh my brother, testify! Both of these teams ask for an anything goes matchup. Jim Cornette granted the request, it's the James Gang and the Monster Abyss against Team 3D and Run. No disqualification. Ladies and gentlemen, the following no six-man tag team, no, no disqualification yes, grudge match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one, Kip James. BG James, they are the James Gang. You know, this really, truly is a long-term grudge and long-term rivalry between the James Gang and Team 3D. But now, we've added that extra piece to the puzzle. How is the monster gonna fit into this equation of a six-man tag, James Mitchell and Abyss, to join BG and Kip, the James Gang, for this Anything Goes matchup? And their tag team partner, accompanied to the ring by Father James Mitchell, six foot eight inches tall, 248 pounds, he is the monster, Abyss! I'm gonna tell you right now, you can look at that man and know he's every bit of 350 pounds. I think he just got shorted about 102 pounds. <laughs> he's 6'8", he's 350, he's an uncontrollable monster on the loose. And you know what? At any time when you see the monster Abyss, you know that James Mitchell could be there and he could hit that detonation device. Oh, that doomsday device. Yep. This is gonna be the X Factor, though. Can Jim Mitchell keep Abyss focused on what the James Gang has, man? He's going in there to help them. 
He's not in business for himself, and it's going to be hard for Abyss not to get that tunnel vision. And their opponents, from New York City, Brother A, Brother Devon, and Brother Run, they are King You know, in the past, we've accused the Monster Abyss of tunnel vision. But boy, when I heard from Brother Ray, when I heard from Team 3D in the pre-match promo, the interview, talk about tunnel vision, you think they've got violence on their minds? Violence, violence, and more violence. And these are three people that, yes, they are a family. They have been together for so long. They know the back of each other's hands like nobody else. They know where to be, when to be there, because they know the other one's gonna have their back. And that might just be a little bit too much for the James game to overcome, because there's nothing like continuity. There's nothing like being fluid, and if there's anything, Team 3D has that. Well, with apologies to James Mitchell, let me be the devil's advocate. You can talk about that family all you want. You can talk about the experience, Edge, that Team 3D, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, and Run have together because of their long-term association. And yes, you can point out that Abyss, uncontrollable, unpredictable, hasn't teamed in the past with the James Gang. But I mean, when you put someone who's six foot eight, 350 pounds into the mix, I think that may override any experience edge that the opposition has. Yeah, that's a great point. We're gonna find out. He's so destructive. I mean, he is a force, and anybody that gets caught in that black hole slam is gonna feel the wrath of it. They're gonna get counted out. And I'll tell you, the thing that I love about this match is it's no disqualification. They asked for it, they wanted it, they wanted to tear the house down. This is all about settling the score right here, going and getting the extra man. And it's gonna be brutal, I can promise you that. Oh, nice elbow. I mean, shoulder block right there by Brother Devon. You're right, Brother Devon goes airborne, and you're right. Oh, he put the shoulder into BG James. Knocked him all the way out to the apron. And here comes the Monster Abyss in to square off against Brother Devon. Uh, it looked like Brother Rump was saying, tag me in, I want a piece of him, look at him. He wants a piece of that monster, that just shows you uh, we, we know how the heart that he's got. We know how much fight that he has, but I mean, how wise can this be? I don't Listen know, the they're, crowd. they're chanting for Runt. I mean, Abyss is six foot eight, 350 pounds. You gotta be kidding, Brother Devon tagged him in. Now that, oh man, you don't stand toe to toe with this monster. There's no way. Face to face and nose to nose, and he just got high face. Look at him though, just bringing it. One shot after the other. And I, you gotta wonder what's going through the monster business mind right now. It's, it, you know, might be like a mosquito to him. He might be sitting there trying to figure out what to do with somebody yeah. of this deck. Oh, 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 oh man, went to the cross body block. You talk about little or no effect. That was zero before he got cut off by a miss. Up and, oh, he fought off the choke slam and look at Runt go. Boy, he just doesn't know, quit it all. Oh, oh man, get over there and get a tag in, brother Runt. Tossed him up Take into the lights, fight. high overhead, crashing down, he rolled to the corner and tags in brother Ray. Turn around, Abyss. Oh, now that's a little bit more of a matchup. Uh, to their life, you know. Give him the horse stomp right there, counting for him. And look at the reaction that he got from the crowd here at the Impact Zone at the Victory Road 2006 pay-per-view. What a slugfest here, mid-ring exchange. Who's gonna get the better of it? The right's and the left from Brother Ray. Oh, Brother Ray just going right at him. And then as you can see what Abyss can do as he turns it around and then Brother Ray right back at him with the elbow. And oh, oh, look at the strength of Brother Ray. And a pin, He's got two. No, oh, so close. Did you ever expect that? He got Abyss up. A lot easier than I ever thought. Powered him down. Oh, we'll telegraph that back body drop, Abyss. You know, it's very rare that you see somebody that's actually even bigger than Brother Ray out there in the ring. Oh, now doing the BG impersonation. You could see he couldn't stand that. Uh -oh. But he took too much time yep. doing it. A little premature celebration. Does oh. it, oh, does it help Team 3D at all? Big boot for Devon. Oh, where's he gonna put right? Any damn what are you where? Doing? And he went, oh, he just threw him out of the ring! Into the crowd! Oh, the crowd! Grabbing him! And throw him, putting him back in! Look at that! Unreal! All the way out of the ring, into the crowd!
to the crowd, and the crowd caught him and threw him back over the rail. Oh, there's a reason that they asked for this to be anything goes. There's a reason they asked for it to be no disqualification. And look at the James Gang. They're gonna introduce some weapons into the match. Oh, that was just all they needed. Once the window was open, once the abyss pretty much took Brother Rod out of the picture, and now they're doing celebrating with a couple cold ones. Whoa! And here comes Team 3D. You're not gonna embarrass them. Meanwhile, outside, Abyss just having his way with Brother Run. A little premature celebration right there for Team 3D. They should have known, I mean, uh, for the James King, they should have known better with Team 3D involved. And now they're celebrating and getting the last laugh. Meanwhile, Abyss on the entrance ramp has got Brother Run and just tossing him all over the building. Oh, Brother Run, and look at the blows there from Kim James and Brother Devon. Just one shot after another. I mean, this has turned into the fight that we knew it would become. You know, after seeing the matchups in the past between these two teams, Don, I didn't think they could get more physical, but that's what this has been. Oh, it's absolutely going to get physical. And you can see Brother Ray, he's got BG James right where he wants him, on his back on the ramp. And the shots there by Devon and Kip James, they're just trading blows. You see the intimidation by Abyss with referee Rudy Charles. Devon definitely getting the better of these shots in on Kip James. Trash oh. can lit right in his face. Man, that, you can feel the, the vibration of that. And look at that, Brother Runt just goes slammed into the wall, even knocked some of the trimming down. Oh, but that's how you stop him, have him run into the wall himself. Moved out of the way, Brother Runt, steel chair right in the monster's face. Knocks him right there on the ground. And look at this, Brother Rudd going up top here. He's just got hard and he double foot stops him right on his chest. You're right from the top of the entrance ramp down to the chest of the monster down on the arena floor. 3D and the James Gang still battling down the ramp. I mean, I, can you believe that Brother Rudd able to turn the tides he's on this got, man? He's got a golf club and he's got it wrapped around Abyss's neck. Why the hell not? I mean, his is. It smashes him on the head right there. Brother Devon going to bring the kendo stick into play, and now he's got that right up against the throw to Kip James. Oh, it's all Team 3D right now. I don't know. I mean, I looked over there, and you can see James Mitchell around the side trying to talk to BT to get him fired up. He's doing his job there. But BT's hurt. Kip James is hurt. Smart move by Runt. Hook that top rope drop out to the floor. Meanwhile, in the ring, Abyss was just filled by Brother Ray. What does he have in his hand here? staple gun. Oh, he's got that staple gun! Oh, he's putting it right there into the head of Abyss. Oh, man. That's just the thought of that going. And now what's he got? He's got a sign. Oh, you can read it right there. He's still got the staple gun. Well, no! Oh, well, he's not, he's, is he? Yeah, yes, he, he is! Right into the top of his head! Oh. It didn't fit, he's gonna go at it, go at it again! Oh, look at that! God! Oh. Meanwhile, get James Famous era on Brother Ray. Well, you, you, you're gonna embarrass your partner like that, you gotta pay the price. And that's what happened, it's Kip James saw a biscuit embarrassed and he went right out there and Brother Ray didn't see him and now bg has got the candle stick and oh, he took a shot from the garbage can. Brother Runt with that trash can for BG and then just flung out to the floor by Abyss. Oh, oh what a shot right there by 3D. And it's all legal, it's no DQ. He just slammed a 350 pound monster, Brother Ray. Oh. Kendo stick shot. Keep your eyes on to Brother Devon. I think he may be headed up top. Abyss right there doing everything he could to keep those legs closed, but he's got him open now. Oh, he nailed it, get on. Perfectly placed diving headbutt by Brother Devon. Team 3D in the driver's seat. Totally in control. Two members of 3D up. Abyss, the James Ganger down. Oh, here comes BG and Kip, what a comeback. Well, they, the crowd was chanting for the tables, and then they turned around, and there was BG and Kip. That's an experience they have of working together. They went ahead and let him play to the crowd. They set it up, and when they turned right into him, and now you see BG James grabbing the table from underneath the ring. Did you ever expect that? Did you think that the James Gang would introduce the table into the match? Hardly. 
It's oh, the that. trademark of Team 3D, but the James gang, I think they, they would have beat him at their own game. Yeah, what a way to rub it in. I mean, what a way to rub it in. Put that table up and put them through it. That's how you do it. That's how you get your revenge. Well, Brother One, circling around the ring, all three members of Team 3D were down, but Brother Ray up. Brother Ray, oh, he moved the table out of the way. Did you see that? Right at the last minute, BG tried to put Brother Run through the table. No luck. Nice double team right there on BG. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Brother Run though, caught the front of it, though, because that just meant he had farther to fall. Oh, look at the teamwork there on Kip Gang. Absolutely rattled his cage. James Gang reeling. A monster abyss up to, oh, his feet. Here comes the choke slam for Devon, but he walked right into a trash can shot from Brother Ray and another one. I mean, that was one of those where Brother Devon knew he had to, to take it, so he's got two, it. No! How did he fight out of that? Fighting on fumes, the monster kicks out at two. Meanwhile, Team 3D gonna position the tables. Who do they have their sights set on? Look out, Kip with that up! Oh, kendo stick. You know, it's just one of those that any time you take hesitation to play to the crowd, it's costing them. And look at that, Kip James takes Brother Devon out. Right out of the ring with him. And now look at this. Is he going to go there for the answer drop? No. He tried it. Abyss blocked it. Wind him up. Oh, Black Hole slammed it right there on the God, table. right through the table. Landed on top of him and got the three count. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, the James Gang and the Monster Abyss. Size, power, strength of the monster in the end proved to be too much. Oh, it did. He just flattened him into that table and then applied his weight and broke the table down underneath him. Whoa! Mitchell and the monster in the ring. James Gang, they get the win along with the Abyss, but they bailed out. They don't want any part of a post-match celebration. Brother run down and out. We're gonna send it to the pack. JB with America's Most Wanted and Gail Kim. Backstage with America's Most Wanted and Gail Kim set to do battle tonight in a mixed six-person tag team matchup. I gotta ask you, last month, it was their last chance to get the titles at Slammiversary. Now they're saying tonight, here at Victory Road, this is your last chance for the tag team titles. Last chance? They obviously have forgotten who they're talking to. It's America's most wanted. Titles or no titles, we are the greatest tag team in the world today. JB, who's the longest reigning NWA tag team champions? America's most wanted. Who are the six time NWA tag team champions? America's most wanted. That means we have beaten six other teams when given the chance. Tonight will be no different. We don't need a last chance, we need one chance. Might, maybe a little bit different. We got the girls involved here. I gotta what ask you, you, AJ and Daniel said you wanna know about Sorelda? Ask Gail Kim. Well, Gail Kim, what about Sorelda? You tell well, us, well, Sorelda. Hey, shut up. First of all, it's none of your business. Second of all, <laughs> we may have a little communication problem at Slammiversary, but we're past that. AJ and Daniels, <laughs> Your ass whipping's only a drink away, boys. <laughs> Communication problem. Yeah. Let's leave the beer in the back tonight, yeah. okay? Why? We don't need any problem. Why? Why? It's got beer in it. Why? Yeah, it's got beer in it, but I also have 16 stitches in my head. Let's go, get. He had them stitches tucked out a week ago. He's all right. I don't think there was ever any question that AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels as a team could compete with America's Most Wanted and were probably the better team. But every time that we got in the ring with them, there was always some sort of interference and it always seemed to come down to Gail Kim. I really don't know what you're talking about. Whenever we left it to TNA or if we left it up to Larry Sabisco to take care of the outside interference, they still found a way to circumvent TNA's attempts to keep it a fair match. And so finally, we decided to take matters into our own hands. We went out and we found Sorelda and decided that she was gonna be our ace in the hole against Gail Kim. Let me tell you, AJ and Daniels, tonight is not gonna be any different from any other night. Because Sorelda taking out Gail Kim, you have new tag team champions. And when the time came, she did her job. And I mean, if you wanna know more about Sorelda, <laughs> you can ask Sorelda. Or better yet, you can ask Gail Kim. We knew at Slammiversary, that walking into that ring was going to be the last time that we got an opportunity to wrestle America's Most Wanted for these NWA World Tag Team titles. But now, 
the shoes on the other foot. About a six pack ago, I'd have told you guys how great you are, okay? You may think you're tough, or you ain't tough enough. It's at Victory Road, this is AMW's last chance. Very unique situation tonight at Victory Road. The tag team title belt's on the line. It's a six-person tag match. The girls are involved. And we are back inside the Impact Zone here in Orlando, Florida, in anticipation of our second title match of the evening here at Victory Road with the tag team gold on the line. And here are the taglines to preview this match. At Slammiversary, AMW had the eight-month run as Tag Champs ended by the Phenomenal One and the Fallen Angel. Last month, Styles and Daniels, their last chance as challengers, they stopped Gail Kim's interference by countering with the Amazon-like Sorelda. The new public face of TNA, Jim Cornette, not only granted AMW a title rematch, but to make things even more interesting, Gail Kim, Sorelda added to the equation a six-person tag match with the championship belts at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Victory Road continues with the following special mixed tag team match for the NWA World Tag Team Championship, scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one, the challengers first, from Tampa, Florida, Gail Kim. Her tag team partners, Cowboy James Storm, Wildcat Chris Harris, America's Blues Wanted. I mean, well, Cat just comes over here and says, can you count to seven? Well, that's what it's gonna take. They're gonna win this, it'll be their seventh time as a team together. They are the former tag team champs, but they're the record setters. Eight months as NWA tag team title holders. Ladies and gentlemen, their opponents are the NWA World Tag Team Champions from Gainesville, Georgia, the phenomenal AJ Styles. From the City of Angels, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. And their tag team partner, Sarilda. From the very moment that the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, and the phenomenal AJ Styles, Decided to put their differences to the side, their long-term rivalry. We have called this the X Division Dream Team in terms of tag team wrestling. But to be quite honest, it was until they went that extra mile, until they came up with the equalizer, that Amazon-like Sorelda, that they kept coming up just this short against America's Most Wanted. Why? Because of Gail Kim. And you can't deny how athletic Gail Kim is and how oh. talented she is in a ring. And they understood that. And they know how great AMW are. They know that they're tough enough to beat two on two. Not, not alone having somebody come in and interfere. So what did they do? They got Sorelda, they took care of that problem, and they can go out there and do what they've always known they could do together as a tag team. And you know, you brought up a point about two guys that were rivals for so long, but they always had that respect for each other. You could always see it, you could always feel it, and it just took them both realizing it, and now they're the tag team champions. You know, I love it because in actuality, what they did was outsmart AMW, America's Most Wanted, part of that eight-month run. Surely some incredible victories that they achieved here in TNA. But there were many times gone when they stretched, when they broke the rules to keep the goal. Styles and Daniels kept coming out on the short end. They outsmarted them. They bring Sorelda in. And it sounds to me, just judging by the comments from Styles and Daniels, like there might be some kind of a history between Sorelda and Gail Kim. They kept saying, ask Gail Kim about her. JB tried. AMW wouldn't even allow him to answer. You know, you talked about America's Most Wanted in a tag team that was so respected and still are for their ability. But you know what? When we saw the change, was when they joined forces with the most hated man in wrestling, Jeff Jarrett. And since then, it's been a team that, as good as they are, you can't respect them. And what a drop kick right there by AJ Styles. There you go. Put on the cowboy hat, AJ. Drop kicked it right off the head of the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. And the tag is in. Now, Daniels is legal. Watch the double team move. I mean, they just put Chris Harrison. It was just smooth. 
That's how you can tell they're so good together, Mike. It was just perfectly timed, perfectly done. I mean, it was like a, you know, a part fitting in a machine, man. I mean, the two of them at the same time, and man, Daniel, I mean, uh, Wildcat paid the price. Gail Kim in. Now, what's going on here? She's calling out Sorelda, I believe. No, huh? no, I think that Daniels motioned to Sorelda, and then Gail Kim said, no, I want Daniels, and she walked over and slapped Sorelda right in the face. Well, Christopher Daniels is going to allow Sorelda to get in there. Not too much is known about the background of the Amazon-like Sorelda, but <laughs> what's the deal with Storm here? Ah, oh, they're just trying to play mind games with her right now. They're bringing her out, and they're trying to embarrass her, and, and you can see, you can almost see the look on Wildcat's face, like, come on. Do I gotta go out here and do this? And now it's gonna be Sorelda to square off with the Wildcat Chris Harris. This should be interesting. Uh, she's showing no fear. You can see it Party. in her eyes. I mean, you saw the close-up look at her face. It wasn't what I anticipated. Gail Kim cheap shot from behind. Sorelda just overpowered her right into the corner. Well, I tell you what, Gail Kim took one for the team right there just so that Wildcat could grab Sorelda by the hair and put her down. And now, look at that headbutt by Daniels. And then you see AJ stomping over there and Sorelda's got Gail Kim right here in front of us. Watch it break down now. All six individuals in this matchup. The champs look to be in control. Daniels sidesteps, then flings Gail Kim into the corner. Now the double team from Styles and AJ, and they stack them up three deep. I mean, they oh. are one right after another. James Storm on normal oh. turn. Okay. All right. For $9.99 a month, you too. Can rent that video. Wow. Gail Kim got sandwiched in there. Is that what you call it? I call it a fantasy if I'm on one of those ends, but. Back to the matchup. Daniels and Storm and the Fallen Angel takes the Tennessee Cowboy and just powered him down with the slam. Check that out. Moves off back. Kim, Lake Book, no, just a two count. He's so fluid. I mean, these guys. Maybe the two most talented wrestlers here in TNA when you look at pure aspect of agility, the athleticism, the whole combination. Look at that. They take them out high, they take them out low, but the new tag team champs definitely have Storm cowering in the corner. Whoa, awful lot of time there holding on to Gail Kim, who gets front dumped into the ring by AJ. Storm sent out to the floor, just unceremoniously dumped him. Now, AJ, and you know, AJ, he has been on the receiving end of some offensive moves in the ring from Gail Kim. Oh, she took him one. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna do a little spanking action right here. Man, does she deserve that. Yep, turn her over the knee from behind the Wildcat breaks it up. Oh, he did, he cracked him in the back right there. Oh, low blow. You can't take your eyes off of Gail Kim. You gotta respect her. And she saw that opportunity, and you're going to embarrass her. And she'll come right back and embarrass you, and she did. And she gave him the low blow, and then little Wildcat did hit him in the same exact spot. Yep, inverted atomic drop by Harris on AJ. Now going to position him up on the top corner, the top turnbuckle. Styles going to try and fight back from the top. Two big looping overhand rights. And now from the middle rope, leapfrogs over and charges at him and just squashed him in the corner. America's Most Wanted just seems out of sync right now. These The tag team champs are having, oh, but look at the strength of Wildcat Chris Harrison. You can never forget that about him. Spinebuster-like move, powering Styles down. You talked about being out of sync. I think we've seen that from AMW over the course of the past couple of months, really. The communication problems yes. they had as Gail Kim, check this out. Submission move applied on Styles. Got the head scissors in place and also got the arm cranked as well. And AJ trying to fight through it. Oh, it okay. gets a rope break. Wow. You never would think that a person like AJ Styles could get caught in that from Gail Kim, but that's how good she is. She also has a lot of martial arts training. Somebody that really wants to be respected for her ability in that ring, and that'll get your respect in a hurry. Storm charges in. AJ prepared. Had the boot up for it. Gonna try to come out of the corner with an offensive move. And Storm reverses instead, positions him, oh, on the apron where AJ fights back. First it's the forearm, then goes springboard, but Harris cut him off. 
And that's what they do so well together. Especially if you're going to oh, into a DDT. Oh, right on top of the head. One, two, oh! Broken up just in time by the Fallen Angel. Well, you're right. Fortunately for the champs, Daniels in to make the save. AMW almost regaining the goal. The tags, the quick tags now bring the Wildcat in. Look just as quickly, storms now the legal man. They hold the ribs open there and allow the Tennessee Cowboy to drive that right hand right into the side of AJ and then the humiliating boots to the face. Well, Daniels and Styles and Ferelda knew that they had to keep the momentum because one thing about America's most wanted, you don't be six time tag team champions and really both of those guys have acted in seven times tag champs to six together for nothing. They work together better than anybody. They know each other better than anybody. AJ, yes, he's on the wrong side of town, but Fight. Look at how gutsy, look at how courageous he is trying to fight back. How about that double spring? Inverted DDT drop storm. It with perfection. I mean, that's what he does. It's, it's, we were talking about it earlier with Sensei and AJ Styles is that kind of a person. He just does things on reaction because you can't think about it. You just got to react, and that's what he does. Serelda and Daniels cheering AJ on, also egging him on to get to the corner, and now the fresh man, Daniels, on fire. He saw that first shot, he went right after the Wildcat. He knew he had Storm reeling in the ring, but all it did was kick off the Wildcat, Chris Harris, because now they've got a two-on-one advantage. Challengers with the numbers game. Daniels fights through, hits that double clothesline. One arm for Storm, one arm for Harris. Oh, man, powered him down. Death Valley driver, one, pin two. two, no. That just looked like it hit Storm wicked right there. Looked like he broke his neck. Here it comes. Oh, look at Gail Kim, and that's what she does. Rakes the eyes, and now Sorella comes in. And what a shot right there by Gail Kim. Daniels going for the Angels' wings, but not successful. Now it's broken down here. Gail Kim and Sorella with the exchange. Sorella has Gail Kim up. Look. What you gonna do with her? Oh, whoa! Great combination right there by Gail Kim as she gets out of it, but oh man, right back in it. Sorella choke slam attempt broken up by the Wildcat Chris Harris, who then gets a right hand from Daniels. And Gail Kim just snapped off the Hurricane Rana on Daniels. I call that the Hurricane Rana. That's appropriate. Close line by Sorella. Oh man. Left arm lariat from Harris. Drilled Sorella, took her out, but AJ. From the top. It looks like it came from the ceiling, man. I mean, when you talk about getting high there and looking at fighting it with Storm. Oh, AJ Styles takes it right there on the head. Daniels in. Daniels now. Submission hold applied here. He's got the head seized. He's got the arm seized at the same time as Storm. Oh, Storm not tapping out because Harris made the save. The talent in that ring is just unreal. It really is. I don't care what side you're rooting for, who you like or don't like. You know, we talked about the communication problems that AMW has had over the course of the past couple of months, but Don, they've been working pretty well together in this match with just a couple of exceptions. Keep your eye on Gail Kim. Oh, look at that! She does the death sentence for AJ Styles. He's got all oh, Daniels fights out, but how about that teamwork? I mean, AJ Styles is fighting on Wildcat because he knows when he hits that on Daniels, it's over, and what does Gail Kim do? She climbs up and hits it herself. AMW, they're gonna go double team again on Daniels here. Here comes the Wildcat. Styles getting up to his feet, but oh, Styles caught the clothesline from Harris. That is just a, such a wicked clothesline, man. He, he places it perfectly and it just snaps your head back and your body back, and oh no, he's got the handcuffs. Looks like he's gonna use them like brass knuckles right there. Oh, he misses though. Now the trademark handcuffs come into play. Angels wings from Daniels on Harris. Roll him over and pin him. Slick Johnson one, count one, two, two oh, oh. Gail Kim. Man, she's been working with these guys like she's been wrestling with them for years. But oh, the strength of Sorella, she slams her down. The power move with the choke slam, and then the super kick from Storm to Sorella. I mean, they're not treating him any differently. And look at AJ with the cross body block. He's got it. No, just a two count on Storm. Now, boils down to the phenomenal one AJ Styles and the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm to decide this NWA World Tag Team Championship matchup. AJ in trouble. The eye of the storm, and he hits it, and man, it rocks the world. Here it is. Two. Oh, just in time. 
AJ digging down deep to get that shoulder up before the three counts from Slick. The tag team goal at stake here. AMW looking to regain those championship belts that they held for over eight months. Styles and Daniels trying to retain and Storm bringing out the beer bottle, but you know, Harris told him earlier, don't bring it to the ring. He does, but look at this. Wildcat catches it midair. The man, if he didn't catch it, he'd have had more stitches right there. He's ticked off for Storm for bringing it in. And look at, there's the communication problem again. Styles gonna go for the roll up. 10, 2, go. So close. Storm kicks him off just in time. Pure instinct there, just gut reaction. Communication problems almost cost AMW again. Quick roll up by Styles again on Storm. Reverse, pin. James Storm just with the two count on AJ. That one backfired on AMW. The chair from Harris caught Storm. Here's the roll up, here's the pin, and they got the three count. Damn it! Ladies and gentlemen, your winners and still NWA World Tag Team Champions. The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, the phenomenal AJ Styles, with Sorelda! What a matchup, Mike. It was just as another situation for AMW. Not on the same page when it counted. While Ken had the chair set up, the plan was, of course, for Storm to shoot AJ over there, and that would have ended it. And it was Storm himself who caught the chair, and well, you know what guys like that are gonna do. They're gonna take advantage of a mishap like that. Don, you're right. For much of this matchup, it was AMW working as a team together. But the problems that we've seen over the course of the past couple of months, Chris Harris pounding here on our table. There you see that chair shot. The problem for AMW as style springs into the pinning combination. Let's take another look at it. Here it comes. Roll storm shoulders down. There's the three count. The one, two, three, and the victory. Dent style. Keep the NWA Tag Team Championship belt. DW, big one yet to come. Road to victory four way to determine a number one contender for Jerry. Well, you talked about hard justice and what it means for these guys to get there, but they've got to get there first. And the only way they can do that is to win this Road to Victory matchup. But when you consider the four men in this and what's at stake, this just has all the makings to be in an incredible barn burner. You're right. It boils down to Christian Cage, Sting, Samoa Joe, and Scott Steiner. And let's preview our main event, the Road to Victory number one contenders match. This belt is yours for now, but I sincerely think it's not going to be yours for long. Bottom line is, Jim Cornette had to do what he had to do. You know, Sting talks about how he agrees with the decision that Cornette made. It's easy for him to say, I agree with it, when he wasn't the World Heavyweight Champion. I was. I'm gonna get the four toughest, baddest, meanest guys in TNA. And we're gonna have a four-way match at Victory Road in July. When one man stands as the toughest of the tough, the baddest of the bad, then that man is gonna be the number one contender. What the hell is that? What the hell does that do for me? Christian Cage, you take your problems to Jim Cornette to solve, and that's the difference between me and you. I have an ability to get it done, and you have an ability to bitch about it until somebody fixes it. You know, a lot of talk is going on about how Joe's never been pinned and never been made to submit. But people are forgetting that in my eight months in TNA, I haven't been pinned, I haven't submitted. Joe doesn't owe me anything. Doesn't mean that I wasn't disappointed. Doesn't mean that sometime down the road, I wouldn't mind locking horns with it. You know, in order to make big strides here in TNA, you gotta step over big people. And Sting, if you didn't like the fact that I walked out on you, hell, Sting, if you have a bone to pick, then this is the time to pick it. Chris, you come to America, you put whoop de doo in your hair, you read our GQ magazines, but you'll always be a dumb Canadian. Wearing that stupid chain thing on your head doesn't make you cool. All it does is make you look like a waiter at medieval times, which is where you're gonna be working after this match. Small Joe, you fat bastard at Victory Road, your winning streak comes to an end, courtesy of the big bad booty daddy. Then there's Scott. It's not about beating him anymore. It's about hurting him. When I get in the room with Scott Steiner, there'll be hell to pay. You understand me, Scott? I'm gonna make your children cry. They're gonna cry because daddy can't hold them anymore. You know, Sting, if it comes down to you and I at Victory Road and I have to take you out, I don't have a problem with that at all. It's every man for himself, period. Jeff Jarrett is walking around with something that belongs to me. 
I'm still the true NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I know it, he knows it, everybody knows it. Come Victor Road, I will come out the victor, and then I will be wrestling for the world title. Friends will be friends, but in a ring, I have no friends. I will get the title off of Jeff Jarrett, and on to me or on to anyone else. Victory Road belongs to me. I came here to be a champion. I came here to be the man. There's three great competitors in this match. There can only be one best. That's me. At Victory Road, I guarantee you it will be showtime. And it is main event matchup time. Three of the four men have never been beaten in TNA. Who's going to be the number one contender to the champ, Jeff Jarrett? It's main event time here at Victory Road. My guest at this time, the undefeated Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. You are about to step into your first shot at a chance the world heavyweight title. My first shot, and the only one I'm going to need. You see, I pride myself on being a man who takes advantage of the opportunities presented to him. And tonight, for the three men that plan to stand in my way, you only need heed the warning of the crowd. Joe is going to kill you. Joe is going to kill you. Tonight, boys, if you plan to step in that ring, prevent me from taking what is mine. Just know that I will. And here comes Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, recognized throughout the world as the man, yes, with the largest arms and the shortest fuse in professional wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Victory Road main event of the evening. In this match, all four men will compete at the same time. The first man to score a pinfall or submission will win the match and face Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, August 13th at Hard Justice. Introducing the first competitor from Detroit, Michigan, Big Papa Pump, Scoot Steiner! Oh, think of all the intrigue that Big Papa Pup Scott Steiner brings to this Road to Victory four-way. Think of the association with Jeff Jarrett. That brings up the most interesting question of the night. Scott Steiner, you win tonight? Jeff Jarrett's hired assassin would be next in line for an NWA World Heavyweight Championship title matchup next month at Heart Justice. And look out, if you're around ringside, do not put your hands on Scott Steiner. When I say shortest fuse in professional wrestling, I mean shortest fuse. You don't have to tell me. Oh, you know. I feel like I can't to avoid him. Up close and personal, you've been there. Here he comes, a man never has been pinned. He's never been, he's never submitted. Proud of that, he wears it like a badge of honor. Now this is his chance to show that he really belongs with the big boys because you win this, you're going to the championship match. The second participant in our main event, he is the undefeated Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe! You talked about him being undefeated in TNA. What you failed to mention was the length of the winning streak. I mean, it's one thing if you've had a match or two and you never pin, you never submit. It's been over a year, 13 plus months, Samoa Joe has been in TNA. And for over 13 months, he is the unbeaten, the undefeated Samoan submission machine. What's going through this man's mind? In his mind, he's been cheated out of that belt. It's a belt that's his. It's a belt that belongs to him. If it wasn't for Earl Hebner, if it wasn't for Larry Zabisco and Jeff Jarrett, he'd still have it. He doesn't like the, what Jim Cornette has done right here in this Road to Victory match. He feels like this is wrong. He's being wrong. But this is his chance to make it right. You can talk all you want, but if you walk the walk and you get that shot again, you can have that belt like you feel it belongs to you. Hailing from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Christian Cage! The pre-match 
comments from the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. So interesting. Do you remember what he said? He said the old Christian Cage has been on a sabbatical. Tonight, the old Christian Cage is back to work. We talk about the undefeated streak of Samoa Joe, and it's incredibly impressive. But keep this in mind, since Christian Cage arrived in TNA, he's never submitted, he's never been pinned, he's unbeaten as well. He has one thought and one thought only on his mind, to rid TNA of what he refers to as the cancer. The cancer is NWA World Heavyweight Champion, the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Sting realizes that as long as Jeff Jarrett has the gold, as long as he has the championship belt, he has the power. Sting knows that he wins the match tonight, then he will go on to hard justice next month, and he will be, yes, the number one contender, and he will be the challenger to Jeff Jarrett and a shot at the NWA title and all that power. Here is your final participant from Venice Beach, California. Ladies and gentlemen, this It never ceases to amaze me when this man walks into the building, when he comes down that ramp. I mean, it's just like thunder in here. Don, earlier today, you and I were interviewed for a Sting DVD. What did we talk about? That star presence. When he comes into the building, he takes over the impact zone. There's that certain quality, that it factor. Sting has the it factor. What a reaction from the crowd to the fourth man in the four way. It's road to victory time. Who's gonna be the number one contender to the champion Jeff Jarrett? You know, we also talked about the respect that the other wrestlers give this man because he's earned it. He's lived it, he's done it, he's an icon, he's a legend. But when you're talking about the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, when you're talking about that gold, you've got to put all that behind you. You can't look at somebody and be idolizing them out in the ring. To them, to you, they've got to be just another opponent. You see, it has just started right off. All four going at it at once. And here comes Sting, Samoa Joe. Stinger splashed to the back of Joe in the corner. Going to go right back to the well again. Oh, oh. oh straight up Samoa Joe. I mean, this is one of them. Think of all the one-on-one -on -one dream matchups that are a part of this four-way bout as Steiner sends Christian shoulder and face first into the steel guardrail. Tag team partners back in May at Sacrifice. Bitter rivals now in the ring. Smart move by Sting, taking the 280-pound Samoa Joe up into the air, crashing down, working on that knee. Samoa Joe looks like he's got knee and hamstring problems already. Well, think how long the Sting has been thinking about this. He'll never forget it, Sacrifice. When Drew walked out and now he's getting him in this, putting him in the Scorpion Network. Oh, but you can see Scott Steiner come in. But he's probably been waiting for that moment to take it out on Joe and he knew he'd have a chance tonight. I mean, that was a case there where Scott Steiner, where Big Papa Pump, no, he wasn't saving. Oh, oh God, man. he wasn't saving Samoa Joe. He wanted to get into the ring and get the pin on one of the other three opponents. And wow, what a release. Overhead suplex for Sting. Christian Cage charges to Steiner and clotheslines Big Papa Pump to the floor. Boy, he just caught his head right there on that ring apron. Yeah, you cannot get consumed and caught up into getting revenge on past differences. This is about the championship. This is about getting a shot at the heavyweight gold, and uh -oh. you've got to have all concentration and look at these two, face man. Face to face, nose to nose. He pie-faced Christian Cage, who answers with a slap. Forearm shots exchange. Oh, Joe reeling him off. Three, four, forearm shots, but Christian cut him off first with the knee. Joe fired off into the corner. Sting and Steiner battling outside the ring at the same time. We're gonna do our best to try and stay on top of this wild action. Here comes Joe. Christian moved out of the way. Joe. Oh, man. 
man, and we, the camera just shot away at the time, but I'm telling you, man, Samoa Joe did a spin kick that caught Christian Cage, leveled it right there. I don't, maybe later on, if we get a chance, we can show it, I don't know, but, you know, the action is gonna be just crazy here because it's not like a, a tag team format. It's not two in the ring at one time. It's all for one and one for all. Check this face wash out from Joe. Bottom of the boot, repeatedly scraping the face of Christian Cage. Sting, who previously sent Scott Steiner shoulder first into the wall, catches him with a steel chair shot. Meanwhile, action in the ring with Joe dominating Christian Cage. You know, I'm not going to say that, oh, you see Sting just putting the end of that chair right in the gut. A big pop of pump right there. I'm not going to say that Joe needs to prove himself because he doesn't. He's shown what he can do, but this is the first time where so much has been at stake. And when guys like Sting and Scott Steiner and Christian are in a match when everything's at stake, well, they bring it up a notch. And you gotta wonder if Joe can bring it up to that notch. Focus now, back inside the six-sided ring with Sting and Steiner. Joe and Christian Cage are gonna take it to the streets as Joe tosses Christian Cage over the guardrail. Look at Scott Steiner right now. He's got Sting right where he wants him, and that unbelievable strength that he has in those arms, and he's just pulling right there on the shoulders. Oh, what the hell man. is this? Somebody just... I thought that was one of the cameramen. Cameraman, my ass! Oh, my gosh, he's been out there as a cameraman, and that was just Jared. What was it that he sprayed in his face? He sprayed something in the eyes of Sting. Oh, my homie, you can smell it. What is Smell it, that's gasoline. Uh, it's, oh, you can smell it. Oh, my, uh, oh, God, I'm picking up the scent of gasoline. He just threw gasoline in a man's eyes. Oh, that is unreal. You can smell the aroma of gas. My eyes are burning, Mike. Oh, man, that is gas, and you can see, oh, that's just, that's just filthy wrong. They ought to look at that. You can see they're trying to wash it out. I mean, think of what Jared said at the top of the pay-per-view. He said, oh, man, it's in my eyes. He said, Sting, I will get my revenge, but how low do you have to go to throw gasoline in the man's eyes? Well, he decided that if Sting won this, he'd get his chance to take him out in hard justice. He wasn't going to allow that to happen. Now, the other guys have got to just focus, but that's the dirtiest, rottenest shit thing I've ever seen. That's just absolutely so wrong. I mean, Jarrett, I guess he took over one of the cameramen's positions and came right out, we were totally unaware, and then the gasoline smell all over the impact zone here. Wow. And you what? could see they went right to him and they were pouring, trying oh, wait, to flush guys, out the eye. Please. Stings out of there. They pulled him in the back. Guys, please, get us word here at the broadcast table the very second, the very minute that you can about the condition of Sting. Cannot believe. I'm not even know Jeff Jarrett was out here running the camera. The whole time not he either. was in disguise running a camera, didn't even see it. I mean, did you catch it at all? No. Never saw it coming in the least. Again, guys, please get us some information on the condition of Sting, if you possibly can. Do we have a camera now in place? What's going on? Oh, you can see, look, look, I see Terry Taylor right there. You see Heavy D, Don Harris, and they're chasing him off in his container of gas, and he runs out of there like a scared little wuss that he was. That's just ridiculous. Like a thief in the night, Jarrett takes off as Samoa oh. Joe drops the knee across the chest of Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. In essence, it's now boiled down to a three-way match, Don. Well, Jeff Jarrett said he was going to take Sting out. He wasn't going to allow him to get that opportunity, and he did that. And oh, he goes! Christian Cage almost has a pin on Samoa Joe. That close to being pinned. Jarrett foreshadowed what he did at the top of this pay-per-view broadcast when he said that he would get his revenge on Sting, and boy, he obviously has with Sting being taken out of the match. I mean, is there anything they can do to him for that? I mean, that's just uh, unbelievable. Jim Cornette, new public face of TNA management. You've got to be watching. Check this out. Muscle buster attempt by Samoa Joe. Christian Cage able to fight him off. Oh, Christian Cage can see the end of this match in a hurry when you get caught up in that. Nobody gets survives if he hits it. Now look at this. Christian Cage just turning on the heat right there. Just letting him have it. Scott Steiner still outside the ring, still trying to get his composure. He took some shots. 
You're right, third member of the matchup, Steiner out of the arena floor. Little payback here for Joe with Christian Cage using the face wash of his own, and now off the ropes with Steiner, hooked the legs of Christian. Look at that, he just waited for his moment. <laughs> man, he just slammed Christian into that rail, and then look at this. Oh man, the strength, oh, he suplexed him right there on the mat. Here, right out here on the arena floor at the impact zone. Scott Steiner, he's got Christian Cage, and, and you know how unpredictable he is, Don. You gotta be prepared at all times when Scott Steiner's out here on the floor. And oh, no! ah! So right through the ropes, right into both of them. And I'm gonna tell you something, I, it looked like Joe might have even caught his foot on one of the ropes, and I don't know how bad that he's getting up. If he would have gone completely through, that might have put them both out coming in with that kind of force. Look at Joe, he knows he took them both out in one shot. You're right, two for the price of one on the suicide dive by the unbeaten Samoan submission machine who now tosses Big Papa Pup Scott Steiner into the ring and close lines and just actually STO takedown on Christian Cage out on the floor. Back to the judo playbook for that move. These guys can't worry about what happened to Sting. That's not important. What's important is getting the pin. What's important is making somebody submit. And look at this, Joe grabbing a table. Any way that they can inflict pain. Donna, I'm, I'm just getting word that I understand the referees have taken Sting to the back. Trainers are working over the eyes of Sting. We have no further update that, at this point that, than that, but guys, please bring us up to speed as soon as you can. But they're working on Sting in the back as Samoa Joe has Steiner, and look out, table is positioned underneath them. Steiner trying to fight it off. Nice knee right there, the gut by Steiner. He was, oh, it just brought his face right down on that ring apron. Look at that. That's the experience that a Scott Steiner has. Joe thought he had him, and it just got turned around, and now he's able to set him up on that table. Boy, almost a variation of a DDT by Scott Steiner, as you're right. He just took some Samoa Joe's head, his face, and smashed it right down into the apron. Here comes Big Papa Pop. Oh, he just creamed him with that elbow. Creamed him. It looks like he caught his head a little bit on the concrete floor. But look at Samoa Joe. He's out right there. I don't think I've ever seen him other than when he got busted by that chair by Scott Steiner. I was just going to say a position that we're not used to seeing Samoa Joe in. You're right. Other than when Steiner knocked him out with a steel chair, this time it's Steiner putting Joe through the table. Instead, Christian's going to try and pick the bones. He rolls Steiner in for a pin attempt and gets a two count. Winner of this matchup on to the Hard Justice pay-per-view to get a title shot at Jeff Jarrett, who has really, in my opinion, just spoiled this whole match by eliminating Sting and breaking it down into a three-way. You can still smell the gasoline in here. And it, it's, it's fading a little bit, but oh man, that just how dirty and filthy can you get and low down. That's why he's the most hated man in wrestling. But low! Oh, what a Bomb, a power slam right there by Steiner. And off that power slam, it's Steiner immediately going for a pin. Drop down right into the cover. Not able to put away Christian Cage. And, oh, Steiner getting right in the face of senior official Rudy Charles. That's always that intimidation factor that comes into play when Big Papa Pump is on the prowl. Think about this. If Scott Steiner can pull this off, he'll get to face Jeff Jarrett when the title's on the look look out. out. Oh, oh, man. Bad landing for Christian Cage. Steiner doing everything within his power to try and balance up on those ropes, but both men down, Joe in, and Joe tries, no, to go for the cover on Steiner, now on Christian, and not successful either time. Well, that landing cost both of them. Steiner hit the back of his head, and then you saw how far Christian Cage fell, and this is Samoa Joe's chance. Both guys right now look like they're just absolutely beaten. Look at the power right there, but you gotta remember, there's somebody behind you at all times, and that's the experience of Christian. Cage. Dropped toe hold by Christian Cage on Samoa Joe. The former NWA champ gonna go high risk, airborne from the top. Oh, man, he caught nothing but canvas right there as both of them get out of the way. Splash attempt, you're right, does not connect, but boy, that clothesline sure did. But just as soon as Steiner connects with a lariat, Samoa Joe drops him in his tracks when Joe, oh, 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 he hit the clothesline on Big Papa Pump. You can see the forehead of Samoa Joe. You can see a little blood on it right there as he took such a wicked shot, but man, he's so powerful. He can Look feel it now. I mean, he can feel his goals can be realized right here. His dream can be realized right here. Rapid, he could get that shot. Rapid fire, right hands by Samoa Joe on Christian Cage, who now battles back. Joe, precarious position. 
Listen to Christian lay in those open hand slaps. Turned around just in the nick of time and then sent Steiner right into Joe. Pin on Steiner, no. Scott Steiner, man, showing heart right there as he kicks out of it. Christian Cage, oh, he wants a shot at Jeff Jarrett so bad, and this is a chance to Un right the wrong. No, going for the unprettier again. He tried it on Joe earlier to no success, and oh, there's the belly to belly by Steiner. He says he's got him beat, he's got him put away, and Steiner recliner is next. Oh, this is his chance. Samoa Joe is out right now of the ring. If he can make Christian Cage tap out right here, this will be his chance. You're right, and we will see Steiner against Jarrett next month at Hard Justice, if successful here. And he also would break the unbeaten streak of Christian Cage in the process, but here comes Joe. He's got the choke on him. Oh, this is his chance and roll, man. When Joe gets this, the rear naked choke, though, can he make it work? Steiner fighting. You gotta remember, Christian can't allow this to happen. He's got to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, but Joe wisely in anticipation of Christian Cage mounting the top rope, he gave up on the submission hold to deliver a right hand shot to Christian. Oh, they're both up there high, and you can see Scott Steiner now. He comes up, what a shot to the head of both of them, one right after another. Now you just leave yourself so vulnerable. Check this out. Oh, here he comes back in. That's how important it is. Here comes Sting. Yes, he's back in the match. He's got, he's got the eyes, it's been taped up. It's, a, it's like one-eyed Sting at this point. Backdrop suplex, oh, frog splash by Christian. Here's the pin, two, no, Sting breaks it up. Just in time, can you believe this? That's how important it is to him, to rid TNA and Jeff Jarrett, and look at the two right now. You can see Christian Cage looking at him, and you can see that Sting has one eye covered, one eye barely showing, but able to get him wrapped up and get him back out here, unbelievable. Joe has Christian Cage in trouble. Here comes Scott Steiner, gonna try and dump both men out to the floor, and he does. Sting, there it is! Sting in that drop him too! gentlemen, the winner of the match, to face Jeff Jarrett for the World Heavyweight Championship, is Steve! You talk about defeating the insurmountable odds. It's what we've just seen from Sting. I don't believe it. The man was just taken out minutes ago after having gasoline thrown in his eyes by Jeff Jarrett, and somehow Sting this, it's almost miraculous that he was able even to come back into the match and then top it off because Sting wins it. And he is now in line for a shot at Jarrett, a chance to rid the cancer. It's what he came in here for. And you gotta wonder what's going through Christian Cage's mind. He can't believe that this guy was able to come back. You gotta respect him for it. I can just imagine what Sting was saying backstage. People love to see what's happening here. Oh, he's, he's mad. He's not too happy because Sting pulled him off the pin attempt. But I mean, what's Sting gonna do? I mean, come on, the guy had gasoline for his eyes. I can't even believe he was able to get back out here. Look now, at him, jaw uh -oh. to jaw. Now, it's Sting and Christian Cage. I mean, it was, I mean, not just think it was a couple of months ago that, that Sting, when he left past the torch to Christian. Christian Cage right now measuring him up, and you can just look at Sting saying, what do you want from me? Christian, What's it gonna be? Oh, Christian cannot believe that he didn't come out of this thing victorious. He can't believe that he's not the, wait a minute, he's putting out his hand. Arm extended here, the hand is there. Oh, you can't trust him, I don't think. I don't Marley. know, what's Sting gonna do? You can't trust him, but he does it. What a sign of respect. It's exactly what it is. The mutual respect between these two individuals, between Christian Cage and Sting, and there it is. That cements the deal. That's the sportsmanship that we love to see between these two, and Christian Cage and Sting, obviously that mutual respect out of being involved in the battle, and Sting is the man. He's the number one contender. Christian cheers him on. It's August 13 in Heart Justice. Sting has a chance to remove the cancer.